quorum being present, this town meeting is called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The clerk will now read the warrant. To any of the constables of the town of Reading, greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby required to notify and warn all the inhabitants of the town of Reading qualified to vote in the town elections and on town affairs to meet at the Reading Memorial High School Performing Arts Center, 62 Oakland Road, in said Reading on Monday, January 5th, 2015 at 7.30 o'clock in the evening, at which time and place the following articles are to be acted upon and determined exclusively by town meeting members in accordance with the provisions of the Reading Home Rule Charter. Mr. Arena moves that we dispense with the further reading of the warrant with the exception of the officer's return. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, motion carried. By the virtue of this warrant, I, Thomas Friedman, Friedman of, on December 12, 2014, notified and warned all inhabitants of the town of Reading qualified to vote on town affairs to meet at the place and time specified by posting attested copies of the town meeting warrant in the following public places within the town of Reading. Warren Killam School, Reading Police Station, Reading Municipal Light Department, Joshua Eaton School, Parker Middle School, Barrow School, Birch Meadow School, Wood End School, and Town Hall. The date of posting being not less than 14 days prior to June 5th, 2015, the date set for the town meeting in this warrant. I also caused a posting of this warrant to be published on Town Reading website on December 12th, 2014. Before we begin, Chair would like to remind town meeting members and inform newly elected members and our non-members in attendance tonight about some of the basic rules and how we will proceed. When you are recognized, please wait until you have the microphone before speaking. In addition to being heard in the hall, we want you to be heard on RCTV as well. The tapes from the cable cast may be used in verifying the official report. Before speaking, please state your name and precinct. Members are limited to no more than 10 minutes. The chair will call on people roughly in the order that they raise their hands, taking those who have not yet spoken first. Non-members may speak, but only after members have first had the opportunity to do so and are limited to five minutes. Non-member proponents of a motion may speak with the permission of a body. In all cases, the speaker, if the speaker needs more time, please request it of the body before beginning when possible. Also, you need to tell town meeting how much extra time you're requesting. Remember to stay away from personal attacks or personal references. We are here to discuss issues and not personalities. Remember, we're a legislative body. After debate has proceeded for a while, we may have someone move the previous question or simply move the question. That is a call for debate to end. The motion itself is non-debatable and will proceed directly to the issue of stopping debate. That takes a two-thirds vote. The chair will not recognize that motion from a person who has just spoken. In other words, if you want to move the question and stop debate, that must be the only thing you've risen for. Tonight, we may have several non-members who wish to speak. Before taking such a vote, I'll inform the body that we have non-members who would like to speak, but it is still town meeting's right to end debate when it feels it has heard enough to make a decision. Amendments. We may have people offer amendments to motions on the floor. These will be accepted and acted upon before we return to discussion of the main motion. Town meeting members must be sitting in the lower portion of the hall if they want to be recognized as town meeting members and have their votes counted. There's often confusion between two particular motions, indefinite postponement and tabling. Let me give you a brief explanation of the difference. Indefinite postponement is a motion asking the body not vote for a particular motion during the life of this town meeting. Although it is thought of not so much as a vote against a particular issue, but rather a postponement, the result is the same. Voting in favor of indefinite postponement has the same result as voting against the main motion. If indefinite postponement carries, the main motion is defeated. A motion to indefinitely postpone is debatable. 
Tabling is used for another purpose altogether. Table, tabling temporarily puts a motion aside. It can be brought up again by anyone moving to take it from the table at any time before the meeting adjourns, sine die. This motion is non-debatable, although the chair will allow a brief explanation as to why the motion to table has been made. Adjournment. There are two types of adjournment. At the end of the, the evening, we adjourn to a time certain. Tonight, for instance, when we're done for the evening, we presumably will adjourn until tomorrow. When we are done with the business of the town meeting, we adjourn sine die, which translates without day. In other words, the meeting is complete. Finally, please either turn off your cell phones and pagers or use non-audible alarms. I believe we are now ready to begin. Business under Article 1. Mr. Arena moves that we place the uh, Article 1 on the table. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, the motion carries. Business under Article 2. Ms. West moves that we lay Article 2 on the table. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, motion carries. Business under Article 3. Mr. Lalasher. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Town meeting members. Um, most of you are pretty familiar with this process, but for the new folks, there's uh, two ways that the, the town spends money on capital. The first is in Article 3, where uh, items are added or moved around or changed in their dollar amount in the capital plan. That, that motion in itself, which is Article 3, does not actually authorize spending. That just sets up the plan. Then Article 4 actually authorizes us to, sp to spend the money. So in Article 3, uh, there's a very small, modest amount of changes. There's four small items totaling 50000 for action uh, under Article 4 to be added. And then uh, in an effort to start balancing the FY16 capital plan, this doesn't fully do it. There's been um, some balancing on the town side to get towards that goal for next April. FinCom report. Finance Committee recommends to propose amendments to the fiscal year 15 to fiscal year 24 capital improvements pr uh, program by a vote of 8-0-0 at the meeting on December 8, 2014. Is there further discussion? None appearing. We're ready for the, oh, Mr. Lalasher. I would also like to request uh, Dr. Doherty to have a few minutes to explain something. Dr. Doherty? Thank you. Good evening, town meeting members. On behalf of the Reading School Committee, I wanted to give you a brief update on the ongoing school space issue and the possibility of a special town meeting in February to discuss uh, some uh, ways to address that space issue. At the December 22nd, 2014 school committee meeting, the committee directed the superintendent to develop a plan for implementation of modular classrooms at some of our elementary schools to address space needs for the 2015-16 school year. Since the December 22nd meeting, we've been in contact with the town manager and the town clerk about the possibility of a special town meeting in February. The need for modular classrooms for next year is due to the continuing high demand for tuition-based full-day kindergarten, the lack of available classroom space to accommodate that need, and the need for an additional grade one classroom for Joshua Eaton students for next year. Currently, our kindergarten class sizes at Joshua Eaton are well above the recommended guidelines of 18 to 22 students, and we will need to add an additional teacher and classroom space at that school for next year. In addition, as of the kindergarten registration deadline on December 19th, 226 children have been registered for full-day kindergarten, representing 77% of next year's current kindergarten registrations, which is a 6% increase from this year. Our biggest space concerns next year are at Joshua Eaton, Barros, and Killam. The reason to request a special town meeting in February rather than wait until April town meeting is twofold. First, we do need to identify and notify families by March 1st what their school assignment is for next year and whether or not they will have half day or full day kindergarten program. In addition, if town meeting approves the funding for the additional classroom space, a February timeline allows us to have the classrooms in place for the start of the school year 
If we waited until April town meeting, we would not have the modular classrooms in place for the start of the 2015-16 school year. We do understand that town meeting members have already had several special town meeting sessions over the last year, and we do not take this request lightly. We, do not, we did not feel that it would be appropriate to address town meeting with this request during this session in January because we wanted to make sure that town meeting members had the information needed to make an informed decision. This item will be discussed this Thursday at the Reading School Committee meeting. In addition, the Reading Public School Administration and the Reading School Committee will be presenting to the Finance Committee on January 14th and to the Financial Forum on this issue on January 21st. At that meeting, the Board of Selectmen are expected to take a vote on whether or not to have a special town meeting in February. The proposal for modular classrooms will be one part of a multi-step solution to address the space needs of our school district. And as you know, there is a space needs working group which is examining long-term solutions to our space needs. We appreciate your time this evening and we look forward to this opportunity to address you with this critical space issue in February. Thank you. Further discussion under Article 3? Yes, Ms. Anthony. I don't think that's on. Do you want to come up here, Camille? Yeah. Uh, Camille Anthony, Precinct 5. Uh, Bob, what I'm curious about is in 16, you've got a reduction of 50000 in the roadway fund, and I'd like to know why. Mr. Lalasha. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Well, I <laughs> <laughs> Um, as part of the preliminary budget discussion for FY16, the Finance Committee for two years wants to cut the allocation to capital below 5% by a small amount. So that is representative of a portion of that reduction. I think the reduction is close to $200,000 a year for two years. So my question to you is this. What else, wh how did you decide what cuts to make? I mean. Uh, who else is taking a hit on, on the 200 and some thousand? Um, it's mostly uh, DPW equipment, and then um, there's a small set that's still undecided on the facilities uh, department. Um, if town meeting also recalls, I forget which town meeting this is, but some of the last couple of town meetings, um, the facilities department has uh, received uh, a lot of money for school roof repair at Eaton. So that was one item that would have been in 16 that was advanced. So there's some moving around going on. Sorry, I should talk this way. Okay. Well, I have, I really have a, r a problem with this, and I'm going to tell you why. We have fought since the early 90s. In fact, in the early 90s, do you know how much money we had in the budget for road repair? Zero. Zero. And we have all of these roads, miles and miles of roads, we have got to keep them up. We're finally starting to make an impact, and now we're, we're going to go the other way. I, I really think this is a bad decision. And 50000 isn't a lot of money, but it's the old story. You start chipping away, and pretty soon we're ne it's going to cost us more money in the long run if we don't get these roads up to the, where they should be and maintain them there. So I uh, guess I would like to amend this article, and to be honest, I've never amended an article um, in all these years in town meeting, and I would just like to amend it that 50,000 is reduced or add, you'd, yeah, you'd take, it'd be 101,400. I am sure there is 50,000 someplace else in this capital budget that can be spared that won't be as detrimental as this. Okay? So to get, make sure I'm clear, you're adding the 50,000 back into the... Yeah, in other words, instead of a reduction, it might just be one or two units. Okay, is there a second to that motion? Second. Second. Okay, we will now, now restrict uh, discussion to that amendment. Mr. Lasher? Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I have no problem with this action tonight, but just bear in mind, at April town meeting, you're going to have to have a balanced budget. And right now, the balanced budget does not allow for the amount of capital that, that Camille and that I would like, just to be clear. Um, I also want to point out that in, in terms of other communities, and we don't always compare ourselves to others, Reading spends far more on roads than any other community in our neighboring uh, area. 
many of them only use state money. We add in four to $500,000 a year. Doesn't mean we shouldn't do more. Camille's right, we should do more, but we are doing something. Um, we've also very aggressively added 50,000 a year for several years to the amount we've been doing. So compared to five or 10 years ago, our level is much higher than it used to be. It used to be a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Now we're up into the four and five hundred thousand dollar area. And my last comment is, is perhaps a little more of a practical issue. With the West Street project, we definitely have a bandwidth issue in our engineering department. It's not that we're not doing a lot of road work in the town. It's just that we can't necessarily easily do the amount of projects that we would like to do. And so for the next year or two, this is okay because of the West Street project in my mind. But philosophically, I'm, I'm in complete agreement with Camille otherwise. Further discussion? Ms. Anthony? If it works. It, is it working? Yes. yes. All right. I don't want to beat a dead horse to death, but I just want town meeting to really be aware of something. We have, we have gone down the road where we put no money into our buildings until they got to the point that by the time you do something, it costs you so much more. And it was the same thing with the roads. We did nothing for years. And I know we're going into a budget crunch. Doesn't surprise me. But the point is, you've got to set priorities. And there's just some things that it does not make sense to cut. Because in the long run, you're going to cost yourself more. So I'll get off my bandwagon. but. We've got to keep this in mind. Yes. <clears throat> Paula Perry, Precinct 1, but also uh, representative or member of FinCom. Um, Camille, we're very sensitive about roads because I know exactly what you're talking about. We had many years of that. But I just wanted to underline a point that Bob made is about bandwidth and understanding we still are going to have a lot of road projects, but they're not necessarily going to be on our dime. And that's, you know, most of West Street and a lot of the other projects that the state's going to be covering. So backing off 50000 is really, I think, logistically the right thing to do. And again, going from zero to over 400000 is a big step. So cutting back 50000 I think, is very reasonable. And that's why we really supported that. Ms. Webb, did you have your hand up, too? No, OK. Further discussion on the amendment? It's not appearing. Are we ready for the vote? All those in favor of the proposed amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. Further discussion under the motion under Article 3? None appearing. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. Business under Article 4, Ms. Uh, Mr. Lasher. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, uh, town meeting members. <clears throat> this is the article that spends money. So the first line item you see is the $51,000 specifically requested in this fiscal year with the four capital, small capital projects. I want to jump down one line to the legal budget. We're asking for another $100,000. If town meeting recalls, I think it was in September, uh, we asked for some funding for the legal budget for the high school litigation. That's actually been a much slower process. Um, on the other hand, as this body is well aware, uh, between uh, the zoning and the charter that you'll take up soon, we've spent a lot of town council's time and money in the last few months at a pace that I don't think either they nor I can sustain. Uh, but we do need this one-time transfer of funds in to pay for some of these huge projects. The rest of this article is moving money from the, community, um, from the administrative services department into various other town departments. It's just a transfer. The net spending is the 151000 But I do want to just make one comment that um, has been an issue that was shared with the Board of Selectmen recently. Um, we did a pay and class study for the non-union people at, at Town Hall and, ta and Town Government in general. To give you a ballpark, uh, compared to most municipalities, we are heavily non-union in the town of Reading, very heavily, very unusually. Um, our non-union payroll is about $5 million. A typical town of our size, the non-union payroll would be one to two million dollars, just to give you some color. So non-union is a significant portion of the workforce in Reading. We did a study, we had an independent consultant do a study that compared 23 communities that we demographically and financially compare to, 
and we didn't look at people, we didn't look at people in jobs, we look at the midpoint of the pay range in our jobs versus the average midpoint in the market. We ask, you ask, I ask, the community asks, uh, all the employees in the town for what I would describe as top quartile performance. And we're proud to usually deliver you that, not always, but as we do the best we can. I'm somewhat embarrassed to say we're paying somewhere in the low third quartile of pay. We don't even pay the average or the median of our neighbors. My goal specifically is to at least pay median. This moving around of 50,000, it's a total of $75,000, is unhappily a drop in that bucket. Um, we need another four to $500,000 just to be paying the people the average wage of what other cities and towns do. It's somewhat embarrassing. Um, I'll do my level best in future budgets to fix that without disturbing you folks. Income report. Finance Committee recommends the article uh, by a vote of 800 at the meeting on December 8, 2014. Further discussion under the motion under Article 4? Mr. Lasher? I'm sorry, no. say again? Did you, did you? No, I'm also oh, oh, okay. waiting for no. questions. Further discussion? None? All those in favor of the uh, motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. Business under Article 5, we have a town meeting member that's going to make the motion. Uh, good evening, Mr. Moderator. Andrew Hurlihy, Precinct 1. I'm making a motion on behalf of the uh, petitioners. Uh, move, uh, move that the town vote to amend the general bylaws by amending section Mr. Arena moves that we dispense with the further reading. Is there a second? Is there any objection? None appearing. Now, this is a petition article. Uh, under the rules, the main proponents, whether or not they're town meeting members, may speak Excuse with the permission of the town. Tonight, we have, as speaking for the proponents, is Mr. Burkhart. Is there any objection? Not appearing, Mr. Burkhart. Happy New Year. This is my first uh, town meeting, and I didn't realize they were normally so well attended. Um, but it's great to see all of you here. My name is Eric Burkhart. I live in Reading at 161 Belmont Street, which is in Precinct 2. Uh, I'm a fairly active town citizen. I'm one of the coordinators for micro soccer in the spring and the fall. Many, many of your kids might participate in that. Uh, I'm, I'm also on the, uh, the recently formed um, Space Needs Working Group for Early Childhood that Dr. Doherty, Doherty recommend, uh, referenced earlier. So again, with several of you and a couple of the Board of Selectmen are on that group as well. Nice to see you, gentlemen. Uh, we're here today, uh, I'm sorry, with me also, my wife Bryn and the petitioners, um, Walter and Dorothy Marshall. Mr. and Mrs. Marshall also, Reading residents have lived in the town for 31 years, the last 13 of which at 88 Timberneck Drive. And we're here today because of some concerns we would like to raise around a general bylaw 8.9.1, which addresses firearms. My wife, Bryn, and I first met Mr. and Mrs. Marshall about a week ago when they raised uh, to us and several of our neighbors their concerns about the possible legality of discharging firearms while hunting on private land in Reading. And we were surprised because we thought that it was not legal to discharge firearms in the town in that way. Uh, and we took it seriously because my wife Bryn and I live next to the Timberneck Swamp Conservation Area. And my kids and several of the kids in the neighborhood play in the woods in that area. So we did a bit of research and in some ways we came away with more questions than answers. And we knew the Marshalls 
had time at this meeting tonight, so we asked to, uh, to join them. I'm only presenting uh, because I'm the, the least good looking of the group, uh, so I was deemed to be the least distracting to everybody. But Mr. and Mrs. Marshall are here uh, and can help uh, uh, answer any questions that anybody might have. So what is the key issue that brings us here. It is this. It could be interpreted by some from the town bylaw that it is legal to discharge firearms while hunting on private land in Reading without Board of Selectmen approval. And if interpreted in this way, we believe that it could be a public safety issue. Now, several town sources indicate that it is in fact not legal. Uh, if we look at a couple of the town forest regulations, in there it does say the discharge of firearms is prohibited in the town of Reading, including in the town forest. And also, with town conservation lands rules and regulations, similarly says discharge of firearms is prohibited in the town of Reading, including conservation land. Now, the petitioners, Mr. and Mrs. Marshall, wanted to make sure that this was the case, particularly in relation to the Timberneck Swamp Conservation Land, which they also live next to, and which does include a private parcel of land uh, in the middle of it. And so they made some inquiries of the uh, Conservation Committee and received an email saying that the Board of Selectmen approval is, in fact, required. And then also with the police department, they inquired there and got a similar answer. So why is this still ambiguous to us? The reason is the bylaw and the language of the bylaw seems to contradict this. This is the bylaw, 8.9.1, in its current form, and it was amended to this uh, wording in 2011. Now there's a lot of words in here. I don't speak bylaw, so I had to break it down a little bit, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. It starts by saying, no person shall fire or discharge any fireworks, firearms, cannon, or explosives of any kind. That's straightforward. All right, where can this not take place? Public land. It says on or within the limits of any street, highway, park, or other public property, except with the written permission of the Board of Selectmen or its designee. So no discharging of firearms on public land without permission of the Board of Selectmen. What about private land? It goes on to say, on or any, excuse me, on any private property, except with the written consent of the owner or legal occupant thereof and the written permission of the Board of Selectmen or its designee. So no discharge of firearms, et cetera, on public land without permission and on public land, um, on private land without the owner and the Board of Selectmen and on public land without the Board of Selectmen permission. Then it goes on to say, provided, however, this bylaw shall not apply to, and there are four areas where the bylaw does not apply. The first is very straightforward and clear to us, to the lawful defense of life or property. That's clear, and that makes sense. The second area where it does not apply, again, also very clear to us, nor to any law enforcement officer acting in the discharge of his duties. Third of the four, Again, very clear to us, nor to the use of such weapon at any military exercises or any established rifle range. So, so far, three of the four uh, kind of exclusions uh, to the prohibition on firearm discharge, and they all make sense to us. The fourth is the one that was not clear to us, and it reads, nor to the rights and privileges of an owner or lessee of land as set forth in MGL chapter 131 relative to hunting and sporting. We did not understand this at first. It seems to include only private land as it mentions the owner or lessee of the land. But we're not sure, we weren't sure what the phrase relative to hunting and sporting means. And I think we were to read this as 
this does not apply to the rights of an owner as set forth um, any of those sections of chapter 131 relative to hunting and sporting. So we took a look at chapter 131. Chapter 131, this is Massachusetts General Law, Part 1, Title 19, Chapter 131. It's titled Inland Fisheries and Game and Other Natural Resources. There are 118 sections uh, in this chapter covering several topics, such as fishing, hunting, nature preserves, wetlands, etc. And we looked through and we found two possible sections relative to hunting and sporting that the bylaw could be referring to. The first is section 37, titled Killing of Game by Owner or Tenant of Land Reports. There's a lot of words here, and so for purposes tonight, I, I, tried, I just highlighted the salient words in red. So what this is saying is that an owner or tenant of land or a member of his family or employee may upon such land do two things. Number one, kill or attempt to kill any wild bird damaging his property or any poultry or game reared on a farm. And the second thing that this uh, section addresses is that owner or tenant of land upon that land may hunt or take by other means any mammal which he finds damaging to his property. So we're understanding this to mean that the, the, the owner of the land can, can hunt or kill um, uh, wild or um, uh, other birds, mammals, damaging his property. Now this seemed to address the hunting portion of the phrase in the bylaw, but not necessarily the sporting part of the phrase. The second section that could be applicable here is section 36, and this is titled Fishing, Hunting, or Trapping on Private Posted Land. And here it is for you to read. Basically, it's saying that a person shall not fish, hunt, or trap on private land without the permission of the owner after that owner has put up signs prohibiting fishing, hunting, or trapping. But the question arose to us, could a person hunt with a firearm with permission of the owner? The section doesn't address that specifically. It was just a question in our mind. We didn't find anything else in chapter 131 that would address that, and so we went back to the bylaw. And in the end, it was unclear to us. And in the end, we believe that one could reasonably infer that it is legal to discharge firearm while hunting on private land in Reading without Board of Selectmen approval. And we believe that that should not be the case because we believe it is a public safety issue. And so our proposal to the town meeting members here tonight is simply this. Amend the bylaw so that it is clear that Board of Selectmen written approval is required for the discharge of firearms while hunting on private land in Reading. We propose doing this very simply by striking the last phrase, the fourth of the floor exclusions, which in our opinion contributed to the ambiguity and confusion. We're making this proposal for several reasons. We believe it would be best that the Board of Selectmen judge the risk and the safety of uh, hunting, discharging firearms while hunting on private land instead of private landowners. It would provide a written record of who is hunting with firearms on such land. It would be consistent with laws from nearby towns. We're making this proposal because it is not anti-gun, it is not anti-hunting. We are just asking that it be clear that the Board of Selectmen give written approval for the hunting to occur. And I want to make clear that this does not affect the first three exclusions. We see no issue with the lawful defense of life or property, with any law enforcement officer acting in the discharge of his duties or the use of such weapon in any military exercise or any established rifle range. Could you go back to the previous slide? Okay. I have to ask the town manager to go backwards for me. 
all the way back through. Going back to the previous slide, which just summarizes what we're asking of the town meeting members tonight, which is to amend the bylaw to make it clear by simply striking that last phrase. Thank you very much. Bylaw committee report, Mr. Crook. The bylaw committee at their meeting of December 22, 2014, voted 401 that the form of the article is satisfactory for town meeting consideration. Further though, at the same meeting, the bylaw committee voted 050 to support the content of the article with two reasons given. They felt there's a bylaw change is indistinct in purpose and unintended consequences are possible. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. D'Addario. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ron D'Addario, Precinct 6. I, I would like to offer, for your consideration, a friendly amendment. Would you consider, on that last line, to put, nor to the rights and privileges of an owner or leasee of land, as set forth in MGL Chapter 131, Section 37, period. Now that Section 37 is the one that says that an owner or a uh, tenant or an immediate member of his family could kill uh, an animal that was damaging his property. And, and if, if you're okay with that, you were concerned that other, other sections of 131 would come into play. I, I agree with you. So I, I offer that amendment to, to consider only MGL Chapter 131, Section 37, period. Sorry for the delay. We just wanted to check with uh, Mr. Marshall, the petitioners. Um, that's consistent with one um, nearby town. Um, to be honest, our preference would be to strike it entirely. Um, we feel that Section 37, as I understand it, the the the, the you still would need to be 500 feet from a uh, uh, occupied dwelling and 150 feet from a roadway. Um, we believe, I think if I recall from the research that section 37 um, was written many, many years ago when the town was more of a, a rural kind of farming uh, um, area. We're not sure that it's necessary today. Our preference would be to strike it entirely. Um, but we would consider it if the other town meeting members. Mr. Dario, are you so. making that motion? Well, could I, could I make that amendment then? Well, we need, like, I, need that, an, I need the exact wording because I... I well, it, it's pretty easy. It would be the whole red line up to uh, MGL uh, chapter 131, comma, section 37. Yeah, MGL chapter 131, comma, section 37, period. Period. Thank you. So you're adding back in what they want to take out, but then adding section yeah. 37? And keeping out what is Okay, you got that? Council has that? Okay. Before I accept a second, I will in a second, though, but um, 
Mr. Arena has a uh, selectman's report that I forgot about. Sorry about that. No problem. Apologies for going out of order. John Arena, Precinct 1, Board of Selectmen. At the bottom of page 5, you'll note that the Board of Selectmen voted in its December meeting uh, on the subject matter in, the, in a 0-4-0 with one absence. And the reason for that, I think, is important for us, to, for you to understand and for us to explain. This board is extremely sensitive to issues of public safety, uh, police and fire. And after discussing with the petitioners in both our September and our December meetings, uh, specifically that the remedy sought by the petitioners to address what was described to us as the problem of periodic gunshots from the general area of Timberneck Swamp, the board then voted 040 based on the petitioner's own statements that the bylaw change sought would not solve the issue addressed. Um, so for that reason, again, the board chose the vote that it, uh, it took. Thank you. Before we do that, we then need to move on to the, uh, the amendment as proposed. Is there a second to Mr. D'Addario's amendment? Okay, we will now discuss the amendment. Mr. Brown, did you have Thank you, Mr. Barry. Bill Brown, Precinct 8, uh, resident of Reading for 82 years, town meeting member for 47. Uh, in all due respect to the Board of Selectmen, I don't want them telling me what I can do with my property. Uh, I have a little quotation here that may seem radical to some of you people. They that can give up essential liberty to attain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. That was Benjamin Franklin. And for you that may remember history, uh, around 1932, I think there was a gentleman in Germany that started taking people's rights away. And I damn sure don't want that happening in this town. Mr. Brown. I would, I would ask that you refrain from any demonstrations. This is a uh, legislative body. Also, we will stick with the amendment first. Any further discussion on the amendment? Yes, Mr. Mon. Jamie Mon, Precinct 4. And, and this is a question either for the town manager or perhaps the police chief. Is it currently illegal to discharge a firearm in the town of Reading in order to protect from wild animals or for hunting? on private land with the owner's permission. Chief Cormier. I'm sorry, Mr. Mon, would you repeat the question? Is it, is it illegal, legal to fire, discharge a firearm for what purpose? Is it illegal to discharge a firearm on private property with the approval of the owner for either the control of wild animals or for hunting? In other words, can you shoot a gun on private land to hunt or uh, uh, an animal that's causing da to kill an animal that's causing damage to your property? It's not a simple yes or no question. Um, but under some circumstances, yes, it's uh, legal. It, I guess is the best I can tell you at this particular point. There's, a, there's an array of issues that come into play with that question. So if, if you're talking about strictly hunting, on private property, you have to be um, 500 feet away from a dwelling, 150 feet from a highway, and you can't shoot over a highway or a roadway. Uh, so on private property, and you're properly licensed, yes, you could hunt with a firearm. Is it, so is that the question? Yes. Okay. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Web Precinct 1. Um, so I'm having a little difficulty with the amendment because I just don't feel like we got to sort of discuss the question. And one of my difficulties is there was a map in our packet, and I would really like someone to sort of under explain, and I'd like to see a better version of that map and understand what the areas that were defined on the map, how those areas are relative to this um, 
bylaw proposed change and amended change. Mr. Lasher. I'd like to apologize and take full responsibility for the horrific quality of how that map came out. It looked great in color. Um, and, um, in the handout for you tonight, I think there's actually a list of property owners, so you could see the list. That may be a little more instructive. But if you look at this map behind me, and it's, it's still going to be difficult to see, there's a half dozen or so areas in town that are affecting 30 or 40 individual properties. You can see them highlighted by green, such as Meadowbrook Golf Course, um, the Timberneck Swamp. You can see the general areas right here. Um, if you have specific questions about any one of the areas, I could, I'll do my best to answer them, but the map behind me is, is a little bit better for resolution. It's still not great. We've worked on it in different ways. I have a little bit better map of uh, Timberneck Swamp in, uh, in the slides that I was going to bring up. Yeah, it was the one example of Timberneck Swamp, um, and we can go back to the other map certainly. Um, so this is just a Google screenshot of Timberneck Swamp Conservation Land. And you can see this patch here in the, in the middle is a parcel of private land. Um, and this is what initially sparked our concern. Um, and here is another uh, a rendering, again, Timberneck Swamp. The, um, the white uh, area in the middle is the private land in the middle of that. Um, and the diagonal shades represent areas that are 500 feet from an occupied dwelling. Um, so you can see that a part of that parcel of private land is not in the shade. Um, however, we still believe it's a public safety issue because our kids play in those woods. Several neighborhood kids play in those woods, um, and that's why the main reason we raised it. So this is one of the several parcels affected. Yes. Steve Herrick, uh, Precinct 8. I have a question, I think it's for um, town council. Uh, I'm curious, uh, state law, local bylaw, can we pick and choose which one of the state laws we want to follow? I mean, doesn't that kind of override whatever it is we want to do in town, or can we batten down things a little tighter and just say we're going to follow this section or not with respect to that section? Doesn't state law override those kinds of uh, determinations? I'm just curious. Mayors. Well, as posed, um, the question is simple to answer, which is state law um, takes, prior takes priority over local bylaws. So no, you can't pick and choose which state laws you want to follow. Um, but I'm not sure how to translate that general proposition with, into with, the discussion with of this bylaw. With respect to uh, this proposed bylaw change, as well as the amendment that's been discussed, are we, are we in conflict with state law by saying we're going to, are we just highlighting that? I mean, does that really change the, the, uh, the, the context or the content of the bylaw by referencing this state law, that state law that Oh, by the way, are we also going to follow this law, too? Well, this bylaw addresses two different ideas. One is firearm discharges. It's clear under state law that the town has the authority to uh, regulate firearm discharges. And then the other topic is hunting. Hunting presents an unusual problem because the SJC says that Chapter 131 does not preempt local regulation of hunting. The Attorney General sometimes seems to be saying, yes, it does. 
Um, so uh, that's a little bit trickier. But I would say that this bylaw, um, after the amendment, if the amendment passes, um, this bylaw says nothing about hunting and therefore uh, merely regulates the discharge of firearms. Um, the uh, the exe exemption um, that is currently under consideration would um, would refer to a specific section of of 131 and say, oh well, we're not going to regulate in that area. That would be permissible too. And that area that was we're specifically not going to regulate had to do with the protection of property from destructive animals. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, a previous speaker had mentioned that we probably had not heard enough to even know if the amendment was uh, appropriate or not. That's a point well taken. I will allow discussion on both the proposed amendment and the main motion. Now, I saw a hand over here. Yes. Good evening, town meeting members. Tom Connery, Precinct 1. I have uh, two questions I'd like to ask and a, and a brief statement that it is uh, often that I don't hear from precinct, precinct members on articles, but indeed on this article I have, so it uh, alerts me to a concern that my constituents have. Uh, my two questions, one are to you, Mr. Arena, and the second is to our police chief, speaking on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. If an issue like this was brought to your attention, under what conditions would the Board of Selectmen issue a permit to discharge a firearm, or does an amendment of this nature essentially extinguish a right? Mr. Arena. Mr. Connery, it's a tough question. Uh, a proposal of that sort has never been brought before the Board to my memory, and you could ima well imagine that an answer to that would strongly depend on the circumstances. I would imagine you like any decision, you'd weigh the benefits and risks and the desired outcome of the uh, petitioner. And the very nature of the fact that it's qualified by the Board of Selectmen conveys that it's a discussion and decision to be made with great deliberation in terms of all the aspects, but it's, like all hypotheticals, an impossible question to ask at this point, or to answer at this point. And to our police chief, Mr. Cormier, this is simply a point of edification for me and perhaps other town meeting members. Um, apparently our firearms are not to be discharged within 500 feet um, of a private property. How far does a bullet travel? How, wh why was 500 feet established and is that a safe zone? Chief Cormier. I really wish you guys would ask some questions I could answer. Um, so. The 500 feet is Mass General Law. Uh, in um, Chapter 131, Section 58, it delineates 500 feet as the perimeter to a dwelling house. And it's very specific that it's a dwelling house. Um, so how they came up with 500 feet, I have no idea. Um, but I, you know, and to get into a discussion about how far a bullet travels, uh, there's a whole bunch of people up there that are probably more qualified to talk about the traveling of a bullet than I am. But I will tell you that I have done some research, kind of anticipated this. And um, basically, bullets can travel a long distance. Now, there's a lot of things that come into play on that. Um, you know, the round, what would be the caliber of the round, you know, this, the feet per second that it travels, the angle that it's shot at has a lot to do with how far it will travel. Um, so at a certain angle, bullets could travel over a mile. At a, you know, at a straight angle, um, sh shot from a straight line, uh, from a, an average man's height, um, you know, depending on the type of bullet, it could be anywhere from uh, less than a quarter of a mile to three quarters of a mile. So it, it's, it's really, you know, it's an impossible question to, to answer. I'm sorry, <laughs> we seem to be uh, at that level, but you know, if you shot a round into the air at an angle, you know, projecting upward, it could go a great distance. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Lalasher. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I'd like to add on to John's comment for uh, Tom's first question. 
Um, the Board of Selectmen have policies for the issuance of many types of licenses. Town Council and I have already discussed the idea that should this uh, come to their attention, the Board would be well for us to s develop a set of policies quickly and well thought out so that they do have some guidelines to follow. But uh, Mr. Reen is exactly right. It's always discretion on the exact circumstance with that guidance in the background. Further discussion? Ms. Binda? Angela Binda, Precinct 5. Um, this whole discussion seems to be coming out of specific incidents that have occurred, and we're hearing that this is private property. Has anyone contacted the owner? What is, has the owner given anyone permission to hunt on that property? I'm, I'm a little confused as to, I'm confused that there's a big piece of private land in the middle of conservation land. And I'm wondering, has the private property owner given anyone permission? Has there been discharging of firearms? Mr. Burkett. We're not sure if the owner has given anyone permission. And that's part of the reason we looked at the laws. And that's part of the reason we come to you tonight, because we found it ambiguous. Um, as to whether or not there has been discharge of firearms, we have heard what sound like gunshots coming from the swamp. Several of our neighbors have heard what sound like gunshots coming from the swamp. It almost, in our minds, doesn't matter if it has or has not happened to this point. The point we're trying to make is that we believe the bylaw is ambiguous, ambiguous, and so it could be interpreted that it is legal and it could happen. And that's why we're asking to amend the bylaw to make it clear. Um, Chief Cormier. Um, I, I think there's just a couple of things to remember in regards to that question is that it's not only this piece of property that's impacted um, and whether or not the property owners have given permission, um, we would not necessarily be informed of that. I, I am aware that, um, that uh, somebody has been given permission on this property to bow hunt. That's what I'm aware of, but that's, that's all I could tell you about any of the properties in town. Nobody's required to notify us if they give permission. Uh, and in terms of you know, um, the complaints, I will tell you, I did a, a look back of the last three years, um, and we've received uh, townwide 42 complaints of hearing shots, hearing gunshots, 42 over three years. Uh, five of them have been from the area around the Timbenex, Timbenex Swamp area uh, over the last three years. Now, you know, we have not found um, direct evidence whether the gunshots uh, or the reported gunshots are from in there except for the people that report them to us. We've responded to all of them. Uh, we take them all very seriously. The officers will patrol the area. It's a very large area in there, so we don't just kind of go tromping in there looking around. Um, but, um, you know, we, we have no direct evidence to indicate um, gunshots except for the reports from, from the residents. Okay, so, so there are other parcels that would be affected by it, and if a property owner gave permission to someone to be discharging firearms, they wouldn't have to notify the police that they've given that permission? No, they would not. No. Okay, that that seems problematic. Uh, um. it, you know, and and again, it comes down to meeting that other criteria: whether or not hunting on that private property would be allowable. Whether it's uh, 500 feet from a dwelling, 150 feet from a roadway, not crossing a roadway, um, and the map that was up earlier um, that had the whole town. You saw those little green spots. Um, most of them are around the peripheral of the town um, because that's kind of the undeveloped areas uh, to, to generally. Um, and there was a comment about the bylaw earlier, just for anybody that's interested, the, that bylaw as in its, uh, very close to its current state was passed in 1956. There's a big difference if you're standing, you know, 505 feet from a dwelling and you're firing away from the dwelling or you're firing towards the dwelling. Um, you know, you can if be... If you're in the dwelling, there is. <laughs> yeah, sure. But, if, you know, if you're, if you're five feet from the property line, it really depends upon what direction you're firing your firearms. 
I've um, received several letters from um, constituents who have asked me to vote against this, and I know that it really, I, I, I'm really, don't have enough information to support this or not support this, and I think that it seems like a very important issue has been raised, and I hope that it is addressed, but um, at this point, I don't feel like I have enough information. While I, while I understand, and I really think that this is something that needs to come back and needs a full vetting, and I, I'm seeing things that could be very problematic if children are in the area or, you know, if the kids there, they, don't, they have no idea, no idea I've, that there's personal property in the middle of this and that people could give somebody else permission to fire a firearm and the police wouldn't even notify it. So I think that there are a lot of issues and problems that need to be addressed, but I have heard from um, other people who are, who are gun owners in town who asked me to vote against this. So I think I'm, I'm not going to support this, but I think that this is very important and I think that it does need to come back to town meeting and it needs to uh, be more fully explored. Thank you. My far, far right. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Paul McNeese, Precinct 2. Um, you know, I think we've heard a lot of good things, but I personally would be uncomfortable making a change about something that we think may be ambiguous. I think it's a great topic. It's something we need to talk about, but I guess to town council, what is your take on that last, you know, the last statement? Changing something because we think it may be ambiguous, even if our intent is good, has consequences that we don't know yet just by its very nature. So yeah, I'm very hesitant to change anything because we think it may be ambiguous. Uh, I'd love to know what you know, town council thinks the actual interpretation of it is. Mr. Meares? I thought you were going to address all impossible questions to the <laughs> chief. Uh, if you if you look at the recent decisions of the Attorney General with respect to other um, similar bylaws, one thing sticks out. Um, chapter 131 includes a provision that, that says you need the permission of property owners if they have posted no hunting. Otherwise, you don't need the permission of property owners under state law. Um, so if the main body of this bylaw were put before the Attorney General today, I'm not sure that, that it would get approved. Just, um, so just keep that in mind. The, um, I read the language that is being proposed to be removed in its entirety to, to mean that hunting, if it is otherwise in compliance with state law, is exempt from the requirement of the Board of Selectmen getting approval and is exempt from the requirement that the property owner give its approval. And that would sort of be consistent with the way Chapter 131 works. If you take this out, I believe Chapter 131 will still um, apply. And so, arguably, it doesn't make any difference whether you leave it in or you take it out, Chapter 131 is going to apply. Uh, but keep in mind that Chapter 131 contradicts the bylaw, and, and the part of the bylaw that's not being amended will remain in place. So we're always going to have some, some uh, ambiguities. If um, so, uh, this is the reason why you've you've heard tonight. You've heard um, uh, statements that have been made that that um, discharging of firearms is flatly illegal in the town, and you've got um, uh, other uh, interpretations that suggest it's not. Uh, this is not a very well crafted bylaw in the first place. Uh, this change. 
um, I believe is intended to mean that even for hunting, um, the discharge of firearms requires the prior approval of the Board of Selectmen. That's how I would interpret it. Um, whether it'll get by the Attorney General, I can't tell you. I can tell you that the SJC would approve it, but that's a second step. So it sounds like whether we make the change or not, we're in the same spot, and so maybe the better thing to well, do is to focus on it, you know, rewriting the bylaw itself and not this, not this amendment? That, well, I can't really tell you that. Well, <laughs> okay. I can't, I can't you, this is a legislative body. They make the judgments about the policy. What I can say is I believe that I would interpret this, if this change goes forward, I would interpret it to mean that the discharge of firearms as part of hunting requires the private, private prior approval of the Board of Selectmen, and if it's on private property, also by the um, uh, owner of the private property. Um, and uh, I suspect that the Attorney General will have difficulty with that. I don't think the SJC, I don't think the Attorney General's difficulties are a proper interpretation of what the SJC has said, so eventually I think it will get straightened out. But. Um, I can't tell you what to do with this. That's up to you to decide. Thank you. Further discussion? People who have not spoken yet? Yes, Mr. Barnes. Oh. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jonathan Barnes. Um, I, I had a bunch of questions uh, about this topic, this confusing topic, although after hearing from town council and, and actually everybody else, I shudder at the thought because I'm even more confused now than I was um, when I had my questions. Um, am I understanding, I'm, I'm going to direct this to um, town council if I may. I, I think what I'm hearing you say and what I'm understanding is that regardless of what town bylaw comes out of this body ultimately, or even if we live with the existing bylaw, if chapter 131, or if there is a provision in state law that, al that allows discharging of a firearm for hunting, that state law would govern in your opinion, is that correct? Okay. So we heard uh, from Mr. Burkhart about two sections of Chapter 131, which may apply, albeit ambiguous, um, and they may apply if your uh, livelihood is at stake uh, and there's animals destroying um, your commercial goods, um, or if there are mammals or animals destroying your property. But that, the, that those are the only sections that applied. And then I think I just heard town council um, reference the issue that the section that we cited, which talks about a private owner who posts no hunting, that chapter 31, that section of chapter 31 would allow hunting in that case, and in that case only with the authorization of the property owner. Is that correct? Now, that in and of itself, as I understand it, I guess I'm asking your opinion um, as town council, that, that provision would allow, would constitute a state law that would allow someone to hunt on property, private property that had posted no hunting if the owner allowed it. That doesn't necessarily mean that people can, can hunt on other property without the consent of the owner, correct? That, you're not suggesting chapter 131 says that. You are. Mr. Meares. Which is even worse than, <laughs> than I yeah, am. It's even worse than you think. Uh, yes, I believe 
that um, under the state hunting laws, again, remember that we have to think about this bylaw as addressing two different issues. It addresses hunting, but it also addresses the discharge of firearms. So if you're just talking about hunting now, not the discharge of firearms, I believe the state law is that as long as you have a license to hunt and you um, um, comply with all of the, the regulations governing hunting, you may hunt on private property unless it's posted otherwise. And may I ask wh what citation, where, where, which is the law that says that? That's why I bring my associate. <laughs> He'll find it for you. The man with the answers. That's right. That's right. Um, maybe it would be helpful um, to focus on one particular example of uh, what the Attorney General did, and it was a recent case involving the town of Canton. So the Canton bylaw that was proposed, that was passed, required permission from the Board of Selectmen to hunt or, dis or discharge a firearm on public property and required permission from a private landowner to hunt or discharge a firearm on private property. So it, it required a little bit less than what, what is being proposed here. The Attorney General approved the consent requirements with respect to hunting or discharging firearms on pu public lands, but with respect to private lands, the Attorney General approved the consent requirement for discharging firearms, but disapproved it for hunting. Okay, so the Attorney General says requiring the permission of, just even requiring the permission of the property owner is not permissible under Chapter 131. We already have that, and we're not proposing to get rid of it. But what they're saying is if somebody proposes this now, they'll disapprove it. And can but you elaborate on what, that, what the AG's analysis was as to there, why, why or what in 131 says that? The Attorney General takes the position They're not looking at Section 37, they're looking at Section 36. And 36 says, a person shall not fish, hunt, or trap on private land without permission of the owner or tenant thereof after such owner or tenant has conspicuously posted thereon notices which bear the name of such owner or tenant and which state that fishing, hunting, or trapping on such land as the case may be is prohibited. So when a town proposes to be tighter than that, the Attorney General has taken the position that that's inconsistent with state law and therefore it's preempted and they disapprove it. Under chapter, th under section 36. Under section 36, yes. Okay. Our bylaw, especially if you take out the last sentence, um, only addresses the discharge of firearms. It doesn't say anything about hunting. Um, the, this little provision at the end, if you take it out, then it doesn't say anything about hunting. It's only about the discharge of firearms, and I don't think that anything in Chapter 131 would preempt a regulation of the discharge of firearms. Okay. Thank you. I, before I hope that, that's clear. Um, I, I, I had my own concerns. I also looked at Chapter 131, um, and I was unsure. I saw those two sections that you, Mr. Burkhardt, had, had cited. Um, and uh, I, I also saw Section 58, which uh, Chief Gormier had, had referenced, as the section that requires uh, anyone discharging a firearm to be um, more than 500 feet from, uh, from a dwelling. Um, but I, I, I was more confused and concerned about Section 58 um, because, as I read it, it says, a person shall not discharge any firearm or release any arrow, et cetera, et cetera, uh, or within 150 feet of any such highway, or possess a loaded firearm, or hunt by any means on the land of another within 500 feet of any dwelling in use, except as authorized by the owner. So 
to me as I read that, that perhaps may have included a prohibition, I'm not even sure I understood that, that it, that it was a prohibition to be beyond 500 feet, but it then allowed for a, a person to do that with the authorization of the property owner. So uh, there is a, there's a, to me, there was a third section of chapter 131 um, that seemed to provide state sanctioning of hunting uh, on private property of another uh, as long as you had the, the authorization of the property owner. So I'm, I just raised that. I, I, there, weren't, there aren't only two sections, there are actually three sections that are invoked. I'm not sure uh, whether that helps uh, or hurts in terms of the amendment, but, but it struck me as a problem. Um, and, I, and, and I also was concerned when I saw the map, uh, uh, I think we, we all were anticipating, we were talking about one section um, of Reading uh, where this issue, whatever side of it you were on, um, this issue arose, the, the Timberneck Swamp area. But as I understand it, um, Bob, it, it appears that there are at least eight sections in town um, where there are, there is private property uh, that is beyond the 500 foot limitation where uh, this discharging of a firearm or hunting uh, is currently possible under state law, is that correct? Yeah, which I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, thank you. Mr. Meares? Just to clarify, the Section 58 uh, the restriction on discharging of um, uh, firearms within 500 feet says without the permission of the property owner. So what, what that means is you can be you know, two feet away from the property if the property owner, two feet away from the, from, from the uh, um, from the structure if the uh, property owner has given you permission. So it's not inconsistent with 36 and 37. Further discussion? Mr. Tuttle? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, David Tuttle of Precinct 3 and a resident for over 31 years now. I think that this issue is a unnecessary solution to a problem that doesn't really exist. There's no, um, people who do not ask permission don't care what the bylaw says. <laughs> I've lived, I live down on Heather Drive, uh, about perhaps a mile away across the, the entire cloverleaf in Woburn is a public rifle range. I have been hearing routinely gunshots and, and so forth for years and years. I know exactly where it's coming from. I know that it's safe. There's a rifle range over by Camp Curtis Guild. We know where the, the noise is coming from. So however complicated or confusing or whatever, the bylaw is what it is and I see no particular reason to take a chance on changing it. Further discussion? Mr. Burkhardt, do you have a comment? It's a problem, in our opinion, that does exist because someone could interpret it as legal to shoot a firearm in that property, which is very close by to where my kids play. That is a problem that does exist in my mind. And as to whether or not um, someone who's not gonna ask permission is gonna do what they're gonna do, I'm paraphrasing a little bit here of what you said, sir. What the clarity that we're proposing would bring is if that it was very clear that the bylaw said that for the discharge of high, firearm in that area, that Board of Selectmen approval was required. If we heard what sounded like gunshots coming from that area, 
we knew we would know that we could see a written record as to whether or not the Board of Selectmen gave approval for somebody to be hunting there. And we would know that they deemed it to be safe because we're, that's, we're asking them to have the power to make that decision. And if there was no record, then we would know that it was potentially something illegal. And then it becomes an enforcement issue with the police department. And so that's what we feel that this is addressing is that it gives the Board of Selectmen the capability to determine the risk of somebody hunting there. Uh, and if they have not done so, then it is an enforcement issue and we, we know that because of the absence of a written record. Ms. O'Neill. Mary Ellen O'Neill, Precinct 4. I am going to uh, vote to support this today. I believe this does clarify the bylaw. Uh, I don't think noise is the issue. It is the safety of the of people in our community. And I want to go back years ago to when we had a discussion of hunting, and I guess it was only the bow hunting, uh, in town meeting, and we designated certain areas within town meeting that we would allow bow hunting. My assumption at that time was always that we did not allow hunting by firearms in the community. We just are a different community. It's much more congested than it was, you know, 20 years ago, much more congested than many of us wish that it was today. But it is what it is, and I think that we can't take that risk. I think um, just taking out that fourth um, exclusion to the bylaw does clarify it. The three main ones remain. And I think it's the uh, safest and the wisest approach to take. Thank you. Further discussion? Right in the far right? Yes. Tony Bastiani, uh, Precinct 2. I also rise to support this uh, amendment. I think it's a safety issue. Um, I think some of the sections in the uh, Massachusetts uh, general laws are antiquated. Uh, they talk about the 500 feet to the house or dwelling, 150 feet to a paved road. If you're walking up Charles Street, I wouldn't want to be 150 feet from someone that has a uh, rifle. Uh, if you've ever played baseball, it's only 127 feet from home plate to second base. So that's not very far. And uh, there's other sections in uh, General Law 131 that talk about the caliber of a gun. We don't even know what type of gun this individual is going to use within Reading. So if he has to come to get approval at the Board of Selectmen, at least there will be some discussion on the use of what type of gun this guy is going to use for hunting. Uh, in one of the sections, <laughs> there's many sections, uh, section 67 of the general bylaws talks about rifles, revolvers, pistols, and caliber. Uh, under certain restrictions, you can only fire the gun at certain times of the day. Does anyone even realize that without going to the Board of Selectmen, who would probably have a complete set of rules? And uh, So you can only fire at certain times of the day. Also, there's a penalty section in our bylaws. So what are we going to have? Entrapment if the guy violates the bylaw? He's going to be fined? So I think it would be very good if somebody desires to 
do hunting to go to the Board of Selectmen. They will have the latest uh, series of regulations. So that's my thought. It's a safety issue. <laughs> so would we want to read about this in a paper? Is someone getting shot? So, and the idea that we're going to take somebody's rights away? I think if you were around here in 1975, there was a proponent on the radio that uh, tried to advance the point that we didn't have to wear seat belts. I think there's a lot of people that aren't around with us anymore because they followed that line of reasoning. You don't have to wear seat belts because you're taking away my right. So uh, I think this is a safety issue and we should pass the original amendment and I would uh, not be in favor of the other amendment, <laughs> the amendment to the amendment. Further discussion? Uh, yes, right in the middle, Mr. Greenfield. David Greenfield, Precinct 5. Um, I, I, have, I have concerns about us um, voting on this today with the ambiguity of, of the degree to which state law would apply regardless. And I would like to see this uh, postponed till uh, another meeting in order to do the homework on uh, the amendment. Um, I, am, I am, though, 100% for the intent here. Uh, Reading is a very densely populated, uh, the picture you had up there, which showed a little green thing, showed houses all around it. Human beings live in those houses, and every single one of those people is within the range of a bullet. Every single one of them. I used to play in swamps like that when I was a kid. Um, I don't want us to hear one day that that's what somebody was doing and they were picked off. Um, so I'm 100% for this, but within the right balance between our bylaws and the state law. Further discussion? Yes. Karen Janowski, Precinct 2. I have a couple of questions or concerns. One is um, we are very concerned about safety, and Reading is a very densely populated area. I'm wondering with the current law, the way, bylaw, the way it's written, how does that ensure the safety of our children? And that's number one, because we are concerned about safety. Does our current bylaw ensure and protect the safety of our kids? Anyone who will answer. Do we have a response? Chief <laughs> Cormier. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Um, uh, I don't think there's anything that completely ensures the safety of anybody, right. quite frankly. So. Um, you know, it, does the current bylaw ensure the safety of our children? No, it doesn't. But there's no piece of paper that's going to ensure the safety of our children. And as the second question is, um, the bylaw committee discussed, mentioned that there are unintended consequences, and I'm wondering what those are. I do need things black and white, and I am legally, what are the, um, I'm just wondering what some of those unintended consequences are if we do, in fact, pass this Bylaw committee, do we have a, Mr. Crook? Stephen Crook, uh, chair of the bylaw committee and precinct two, town meeting member. I'm not sure the bylaw committee knows what the unintended consequences are yet. Where concern was is that they may be there though. Further discussion? Have, people haven't spoken yet. Um, 
Mr. Sasso? Uh, uh, Diana Kane, Precinct 6. How, how Actually, I, I, excuse me, I called him Mr. Sasso. I, oh, I will call okay. On you next. Yeah, Mr. well, Sasso? I've had my hand up. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Sasso. <laughs> and it's hard, it's, hard, it's hard to tell. Right. Mr. Sasso? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Sasso, Precinct 2. And uh, my house is actually on that map that you showed earlier. Um, I guess maybe this is a question for Town Council and Chief Cormier. So if we do pass this bylaw change and delete that section out of it, and a person shows up in the middle of timber neck swamp without a, and the owner not having posted um, no, no hunting, and uh, that person is hunting with a firearm, uh, what's the effect? Will, will we arrest that person, and where does that end up? Basically, does this really make the change we want? Because I, 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 I hate to come back to this, but I keep hearing the answer that no, it doesn't. Because um, you're telling me that if we move this out of the firearms thing, that's great, but Mass General Laws regarding hunting is still in place. And so if we have someone show up, what, is, what are we going to do? Are we going to say, well, you didn't apply for a permit to hunt through the Board of Selectmen, but this is in the firearm section, and so does it really apply to hunting? Chief Cormier. Um, as was mentioned earlier, so th the section that we're discussing now uh, specifically refers to the discharge of firearms. So from, from my perspective, if somebody is in, we'll use Timonex Swamp as an example, and discharges a firearm in the course of hunting, they would then be in violation of the town bylaw, which the uh, potential um, f penalty for that would be a $300 fine. Now, I uh, have a, a hunting expert here with me, uh, Lieutenant Grady from the Environmental Police, and if you want a little more detailed answer as to whether or not what action the Environmental Police may take with regards to the hunting, I could ask him to elaborate on that if that would be helpful for well, you. Well, I, I guess the question, I, uh, going back to perhaps town council's answer was, but by taking this out, we are still not necessarily addressing the preemptive part of Mass General Law 131 sections 36 and 58 and 37. Right. One, so even one, though if you arrested him or her um, and they went to court and appealed that, then my perspective is based on what town council had said is they'll win that appeal because this law does not apply to that. And that's the well, question I'm asking. They, well, they, they, they may be violating the town bylaw, but then there's the hunting section that comes into play, okay? And, you know, so what we're, what we're discussing primarily is the discharge of the firearm section. So if, if this was amended to take away the potential um, exception for the hunting, and they discharge their firearm, then they would be in violation of town bylaw, which would be you know, up to a $300 fine. Now, I see Ray over my shoulder, so I assume he has something to add in terms of 131. I hope. <laughs> Mr. Meares? I'll give it a try. I think it is clear under the case law that the town has the ability to regulate the discharge of firearms and even to prohibit it completely, the discharge of firearms. Um, let's say with the exceptions that are uncontroversial. But this bylaw obviously does less than that. Usually you assume that if they're trying to do less than what you may do, then, then that's probably okay as well. So as a regulation of the discharge of firearms, you, right now it is, appears to say, the bylaw appears to say that you don't need the permission of the private property owner or of the Board of Selectmen to discharge a firearm if you're exercising your right to hunt. That seems to be what it says now. And if you take all of that out, then it would seem to say that under all circumstances, regardless of what, you're, what activity you are engaged in, if you discharge a firearm, you need the prior permission of the Board of Selectmen. So that's what the effect of this 
bylaw change would be. Um, as far as the preemption goes, we're not, the bylaw does not purport, and certainly once you take the language out, it does not purport to regulate hunting at all. It regulates the discharge of firearms. Okay. And so I, I personally do not believe that it will, that the Attorney General would, can properly disapprove it. I have some issues with the way the Attorney General has interpreted right. Chapter 131, but, mm -hmm. but even using their interpretation, I think it's probably, uh, th they probably won't disapprove it. And the result will be all discharges of firearms, with those th three exceptions, uh, would, be, would require the prior approval of the Board of Selectmen. And if they went to SJC, they would also uphold I think w I think we're more, the bylaw has got a better chance in front of the SJC than the attorney general. against okay. the <laughs> attorney general, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, Ms. Kane. <laughs> so it really boils down to discharge of firearms. Um, someone that has property should have it posted, and I think those posts say no trespassing, no dis discharging of firearms. So actually, the onus would, would go to the owner of that land to protect people from doing that. So, but I'm wondering about Redding um, 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 Rifle and Revolver Club, which is located uh, quite close to the skating rink. Um, and I know that people do dis discharge firearms there, including, I think, the police department. And I think that you do have to go to the police department and get a permit to discharge um, um, firearms in the town of Reading. Is that still the same way, or has that been changed? Chief Cormier. Um, the, the, there is no permit that the police department issues for people to discharge firearms. The Reading Rifle and Revolver Club, and I just want to say emphatically that the Reading Rifle and Revolver Club, Revolver Club is a very safe uh, rifle and revolver club. <clears throat> we do shoot there. The police department uh, uses the facility for our uh, qualifications. Mm -hmm. And the way that, they, that the Reading Rifle and Revolver Club is set up, and angled, and the way their range is uh, directed, uh, it goes into a directions that are nowhere near dwelling houses or recreational area. Mm -hmm. So um, the functionality of the Reading Rifle and Revolver, in my opinion, is fine. It is not an unsafe condition in any manner. Mm -hmm. but, and, they are, um, but they are discharging weapons. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. In, a very so, in a very safe manner, in my opinion. Yeah. Yes. Well. I would hope so. My husband belonged for years. But anyway, but I know that he did have to get uh, permission from uh, the police chief to, um, to discharge a weapon in the town of Reading at one time. Now, maybe that's not, yeah, uh, maybe that's no well, longer. So that would, that would certainly be a, a first safety um, and if, and if they were and they hadn't been there, then maybe, then, uh, maybe we should reinstate that, you know. But anyway, uh, noise travels a long, long distance. And uh, uh, it's sometimes very difficult to see, depending upon the wind and which way it blows. So I would think that discharging weapons there, uh, you know, might, might, might be a problem. And also, that land behind the skating rink goes quite far uh, and hits Linfield. And there is a vernal pool, I'd say probably, oh, at least a half a mile behind the skating rink. And uh, that, that property there is Linfield on the other side of that uh, vernal pool or pond. It's, you know, I haven't, I haven't been down there in a long time, but I remember be, you know, when uh, before the skating rink was built, I remember, uh, you know, several of us walking down, down in the back there. So who knows, maybe, maybe noise is coming from uh, Linfield, you know, of which uh, 
you know, I don't know if Reading would have jurisdiction over that. But anyway, uh, so Reading uh, um, Rifle and Revolver Club is okay to discharge. Is that correct? Yeah, they are exempted. They are exempted. Okay. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Tucci. Thank you, Ken Tucci, Precinct 8. Um, it's a tough one. Uh, I thought I was getting a little clarity until the last time uh, town council spoke, so at the, <laughs> at the risk of asking you to repeat, I'm gonna ask you to repeat. So, <laughs> um, so you might as well get up there. <laughs> so if the, the purpose, uh, intent of the petitioners is to have all discharge of firearms in Reading, including the discharge of firearms used in hunting, come on private land, come under the blessing or permission of both the owner of the land and the, and the board of selectmen. You're saying, I think, that uh, Massachusetts chapter 131 um, exempts that, and in some cases would allow someone to um, discharge a firearm for hunting um, on private property without the permission of the board of selectmen? No, I'm not saying that. Okay, tell me. If we were building this bylaw from scratch... Which is probably what we ought to do, but go ahead. If we were building it from <laughs> scratch and you were tempted to write what would exist once you take the sentence, that last part of the sentence out, and you tried to put that in from scratch, there was no suggestion that it had anything to do with hunting. It was just regulating the discharge of firearms. I think you're fine. I think the, the bylaw would be considered to be fine. And if, this, if the um, town meeting adopts the change that is being proposed, that's what I will tell the Attorney General when, when uh, her office looks at it. You would tell now, the Attorney General that it doesn't impact hunting? Yeah, I would say is that, that right? this is not a regulation of hunting, this is a regulation of the discharge of firearms, okay. and that's the argument I would make to the Attorney General to try to get it approved, okay? Mm -hmm. The problem with that argument is what we're doing is we're taking something that says, well, we of course recognize that there's certain rights contained in, in Chapter 131, and we're striking that part. So it's a little, a little harder to say this has nothing to do with hunting because the part that we're taking out obviously addresses hunting. And the Attorney General takes a dim view of regulation of hunting that, that uh, goes beyond what's in Chapter 131. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Does that make it any clearer? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you okay. are saying, or are you saying, that the petitioner's intent, which is to put all firearm discharge, including firearms used in hunting, under the control or under some control of the Board of Selectmen on private land, if, if, we, leave it, if we leave it alone, would not, um, would not uh, fulfill their intent. Clearly, it, if we leave it well doesn't alone. already. If we don't touch this bylaw at all, if we don't make the mm -hmm. deletion mm -hmm. of that sentence. That's correct. Okay, so there is an, uh, you're interpreting, uh, I guess, section 36 to mean that um, there's an exemption of the need to get permission from the Board of Selectmen to discharge a firearm for hunting on private land on Tuesdays. No, but on, on in private land, right? Right. I'm right, sure or else, it's, or else we sure don't need I'm to change it, right? Mm -hmm. Am I not? I'm sorry, maybe I'm, not, I'm the one that's not clear. Okay. Section 37. Yes. Uh, section What's the problem is the question, I guess. I mean, um, okay. Section 36 it deals with hunting. Right. It does not deal with the discharge of firearms. Right. But it if, says that you that if you are otherwise licensed to hunt, you may uh, hunt on private property without the permission of the property owner unless the property owner has properly posted the property saying no hunting 
It doesn't say anything about the discharge of firearms. Right. No hunting, in which case you can only hunt on that property if the, you get the permission of the property owner. Right, and in, in no case... Presumably... In none of the cases would the Board of Selectmen have a word to say about that. Exactly. Right. The intent of the petitioners, I think, is to have the, town, have the Board of Selectmen have something to say about that. Not about that. hunting, about the, about the discharge of firearms. These are overlap, but they're not the same thing. <coughs> right, I'm talking about hunting with a firearm. They're, they're not concerned about bow and arrow, apparently. Uh, exactly. Right? Okay, and you're all, are you also saying, I'll leave this one because I still don't understand, but um, are you also saying that if we strike that sentence, then the AG will not look kindly at it and you don't think it will be approved? I thought that's what you said initially, but then the last time you spoke, I thought you said it would probably be approved. Or is that going back to the hunting argument again? The, that whether it will be approved depends I think, to a large degree, on whether the Attorney General views this as an attempt to regulate hunting or as an attempt to regulate the discharge of firearms. And that's why I say if we were starting from scratch and we just adopted the language with no reference to hunting, it would be absolutely clear we have, we are not attempting to regulate hunting, we're attempting to regulate the discharge of firearms. But because what we are doing is striking language that protects hunting, the Attorney General might look at that and say, you're attempting to regulate hunting. And it will be up to me to try to persuade her not to look at it that way if you, um, if, if you end up adopting this. So if I'm correct that the intent of the petitioner is to try to put every discharge of firearms, including those used in hunting, that's right. Under the, under the purview of the Board of Selectmen needing permission on private property to discharge the firearm used in hunting, then I guess the, my question is, in your opinion, is there any way to write this bylaw that would do that, that would pass all the muster, or are we just sort of wasting our time, and if we take the sentence out, it's still really going to be there? And if, and if so, then we yeah, should probably I rewrite wasting, it. I don't think the town, town meeting is wasting its time, no. I think that if the, if the desire of the town meeting is to require the Board of Selectmen approval for the discharge of firearms with only those other three exceptions, then um, granted, in the perfect world, I'd probably rewrite it. But, but given the way it is, um, it's, um, yeah, it's a perfectly acceptable bylaw in my view. That will be approved, in your opinion. I, that that's what will I mean. be I approved mean, I don't mean to be glib to say wasting no, no. our time, I, Counselor. I think that if we're going to pass this only to have it come back, what's the point is my point. So, and I'm asking you for your opinion because I sure don't know. And I'm telling you that my opinion is that I will try to get the board of the attorney general to understand that this is a regulation of the discharge of firearms and not a regulation of hunting. If I'm successful, then you're home free. I, oh, well, that's a, that's a mm, kind of squishy for me uh, to make a decision. I, I understand what you're saying. You're, you're not the magician here, but um, it's squishy for me. I, I don't know. I still don't. I still don't understand the point uh, or the um, the consequence. I guess. Mr. Yes. Mr. Graham. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Russ Graham, Precinct 4. My belief is that the only time we should pass a bylaw or amend a bylaw is because we have a perceived problem and that bylaw or amendment will solve the problem. I think the quandary that the Board of Selectmen had and many of us have is it does not seem to us that this solves the problem. What I really want to latch on to is the pearls of wisdom that come from town council tonight have been many, but the one I hear the most of is he would redo the bylaw as it stands. Let's let him do that. Why don't we turn this down? The Board of Selectmen have certainly heard loud and clear the discussion. Let them have a dialogue with town council, with the petitioners, and with those who are advocates of 
the full use of guns in any area and come up with, maybe a miracle, but with an article that in fact will be palatable to town meeting, acceptable to the Attorney General, and probably pass the muster of the Supreme Judicial Court. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Further discussion? Uh, yes. Mr. Phillips, I'm sorry. I'd like, I'd like to ask the Chief a few questions. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Gary Phillips, Precinct 7. Thank you. Boot me in the shins next time. Uh, I'd like to ask this. In all those instances uh, where di firearms were discharged here in the town of Reading in compliance with this present bylaw, how many, in how many of those instances have ever resulted in the loss of life or physical harm to others? I'll repeat the question if you like. Uh, I think I understand the question. Um, you, you want to know, like, forever? I mean, you know, I mean, well, is this, is well, this within the recent in, past? Within or? this generation, in the last um, uh, decade or two? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not aware of any injuries or deaths that have resulted from the lawful use of firearms. Okay. That leads to my second question. If uh, what was believed to be the discharge of uh, gunshots um, that caused neighbors alarm, if those gunshots were in fact gunshots and were not with a property owner's approval, and if they were in fact in violation of the existing bylaw, do you think it would have made any difference to the lawbreaker that the lawbreaker did not have selectman approval? That's another one of those ones that, uh, <laughs> you, can't, okay. yeah, you know, if they're, if they're shooting, if they're firing a, a, a firearm in violation of the bylaw now, you know, then I would say that they probably wouldn't care if we changed it or not. Are you saying a violation is a violation by any other name? <laughs> okay. That leads to my conclusion. Uh, in my opinion, this amendment would do nothing to deter the reckless use of firearms in the town of Reading, and I intend to vote against it. Do I speak? <laughs> Mr. Burkett. Mr. Burkett. Just because illegal behavior might continue if we don't make a law clear, is not a reason not to make a law clear, in my opinion. For those that do read the law, they might better understand it before discharging firearms. So a couple of people have said making this amendment will not solve the problem. It define, depends how you define the problem. We define the problem as the law is not clear. And if we amend it, it will be clear. We don't necessarily define the problem as gunshots, perceived hearing of gunshots, uh, so on and so forth. We're defining the problem as we don't think the law is clear. We would like to make it clear so there is less gray area than there is now. Further discussion? Mr. Carpenter? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Carpenter, Precinct 7. Uh, we've had extended debate on both sides of this. I am concerned that someone might move the question, and we have a great turnout of citizens tonight, and I, I, I hope there's a parliamentary way that we can hear from the citizens who have come out in the cold uh, to, to join us tonight uh, be, before we end debate. As stated before, if that uh, arises, I would inform the body that we have people hope, hoping to speak in the back. People that have not spoken yet? Ms. Herrick? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Karen Herrick, Precinct 8. Um, this could be either for Chief Comer, Comer or um, our town council. We've uh, spent a lot of time talking about hunting, and the other aspect would be sporting. Uh, we're not doing a skeet shooting. We could be do could we be doing skeet sh skeet shooting in the borders of Reading? Could we be um, getting 
um, air guns and pellet guns for Christmas and setting up targets and shooting at them in Reading and because the definition of firearms I think I saw earlier, I don't remember if it was a town definition or a state definition, seemed to go down to that level. Um, and so that seems like then the Board of Selectmen would also start to be called upon to regulate all kinds of um, sporting um, firearms as well. Do we have a response? And, and I really don't think that we've got enough information to, and I think this needs work, and I think the selectmen voted the right way, by the way, but before we invite the public to talk, I'd like to just talk about sporting. Chief Cormier. Um, so some of the sporting is currently done, um, you know, in the appropriate area. The Reading Rifle Revolver Club has skeet shooting um, and other types of sporting activities. Um, you know, could, could there be areas where uh, they could be used under the existing bylaw for sporting? I would say yes, there probably could be. Um, haven't really seen much of it, but uh, I'd, I'd say that that's uh, probably an opportunity considering the way that the bylaw is written. Because um, is the rifle range within 500 feet of dwellings? No. Oh, okay, thanks. Further discussion? Those who haven't spoken? Yes, on the, on the aisle? Yes. Uh, good evening, Tom O'Rourke, Precinct 2. Uh, I also got a number of requests from uh, neighbors who I think we do need to, to listen to. Uh, but I will uh, say I agree with Russ Graham's comments. I think it's a serious issue. I think it deserves proper uh, discussion and support. And I like the, the idea of getting uh, the selectmen and the, uh, uh, the bylaw committee to uh, be part of the process. So I'd, I'd strongly suggest we we, we hear the concern and, and put something uh, to town meeting that's uh, going to be uh, reasonable and also that we can all work with and, and satisfies the concerns. Thank you. Mr. Pacino. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Phil Pacino, Precinct 5. And I thought you all came here to hear me share my presentation on the charter tonight. <laughs> uh, at the risk of going forward at this point. I support Mr. Graham's comments and um, at the appropriate time, and I don't want to cut anybody off from talking, I would ask that uh, this motion be, ta the, the motion be tabled with the intent that the selectmen, town council, the petitioners, and anybody up here in the audience who wants to be part of the process get together and come with one solid, agreed upon item. It's very hard to ask town meeting to take one side or the other here, and that's what I feel like I'm being asked. And I think there's enough ambiguity that's going on here that I don't know whether we're solving the problem. We could be, we may not be, but I really think that we all need to get, they all, all the parties need to get together, come up with one presentation, and when the appropriate time is, Mr. Moderator asked, did you allow me to move to the table? Uh, just to clarify this, a uh, motion to table temporarily puts it on the floor. If you are looking to stop action at this meeting, you would want to indefinitely postpone. And if you did make that motion, we could continue debating. I would just ask that it be tabled, Mr. Moderator. Okay, further discussion? People that have not spoken yet? Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Uh, the chief had indicated that there was somebody here, I believe, from uh, the uh, D Department of Environmental could you, could Protection. You, you I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Charles Stanley Moran, Precinct 7. Uh, the chief had indicated there was uh, someone from uh, a state police agency who could talk about hunting regulations that may be informative for our body. Chief Comia. Yes, as a representative, Lieutenant Grady from the Environmental Police, if there's a specific question, I don't believe he has a prepared statement or a uh, presentation. Is that correct, Lieutenant? If there's a specific question, he can help us with, he's here to assist us with that, but he doesn't have a prepared statement. Thank you. Further discussion on those who have not spoken yet? Uh, in the back? Ken Lafferty, Precinct 6. 
Um, just a couple of quick, quick, quick issues. I'm not sure it's all being brought up. I, th I think we're talking about legal hunting here, um, which is a whole host of licensing, training, requirements. So I know we're talking about distances from housing, things like that. If people are recklessly shooting, I mean, the chief can speak to this, I believe they're in violation of all sorts of other laws. So uh, I'm not sure that's going to solve the problem there. For, for legal challenges, I'd just be concerned that the day that the selectmen do refuse someone, what grounds that person has to come back to the town and start making legal problems for the town based on what, uh, what the selectmen come up with. Um, another thing, just, just real quick, I know we've been talking a lot about this, the rights of the, the property owner, we just do need, to, I think as a legislative body, you do want to consider whether they're here or not, you know, and whether it's the owner today or, or the future owner, you know, they own the property if they're, if they're legally and responsibly allowing someone to hunt on their property. Is that something that the town should be step, stepping in and saying um, they don't allow when it's, when it's in compliance with state law? Um, again, uh, you know, going back to the hunting regs, rifles are not allowed in Massachusetts. I'm sure everyone knows that for hunting, you know, the person's going to be decked out in orange. So if it's legal hunting going on over there, I, w I wonder if this is going to solve the problem with that. That's just, just a couple of quick points. Further discussion? People that have not spoken? Yes. Ann Landry, Precinct 5. Um, just to clarify with Town Council, do I understand correctly that the practical impact of this amendment would be to bring um, hunting, um, to bring hunting under the uh, ambit of the Board of Selectmen such that they would be required to give permission um, as would private property owners who, uh, on whose property the hunting would be taking place. Um, is that accurate? That that would be the practical impact? The bylaw regulates the discharge of firearms. Mm -hmm. It appears to carve out an exception right now mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. discharge of firearms that is associated with hunting or sporting. So it's carving out an exception. The proposal is to get rid of that, that exception. exception. So it doesn't regulate hunting per se. It simply eliminates a hunting exemption mm -hmm. from its regulation of the discharge of firearms. Okay, so then, and so, so there's the practical impact, and then there's the legal argument that would be made to the attorney general's office um, that that you know now on its face it has nothing to do with, as amended, it would have nothing to do with hunting, but would have to do with the discharge of firearms. That's correct. Um, so with the, the question about the rights of property owners, uh, I, I could see that in terms of in, in, this, in this world, the rights of, of hunters could actually be pitted against the rights of property owners if, um, if under Chapter 131, property owners don't have to give permission to hunters, then um, the property owner's rights actually could be helped with this with an amendment like this if they would have to give written permission for hunting to take place on their property. Is that? Well, we certainly wouldn't want to draft it that way um, because then that would look very much like a number of other bylaws that have gotten disapproved. Okay. But ironically, the chapter 131 does trample on the rights of property owners by saying you can't prevent someone from coming on your property to hunt unless you post it. So how does that, I was wondering how does that um, interact with um, you know issues of, of trespass? So it do, is there no t issue of trespass if someone is no, going it's authorized by statute. Okay, so it's not it's there, they, there's no requirement that they consent that someone be on their property. That's correct. Time. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Those who have not spoken yet. Okay. I have three or four people that have asked to speak a second time, but after that, it's probably time to open it up. Mr. Brown? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Bill Brown, Precinct 8. Um, I've heard an awful lot 
concerned about children's safety. For you that haven't been around in Reading as long as I did, uh, in 1940s, the town of uh, Reading actually sponsored rifle shooting in what is now 75 Pearl Street School. Ms. Webb, you had your hand up earlier, too. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I, I guess I agree with a lot of people about um, how squishy this has gotten, and I still have some questions, um, and I, I wonder if the gentleman from the um, Massachusetts Environmental Police could potentially just clarify for me some of the issues around the interaction between hunting and use of a firearm. So if I, I'm just having difficulty understanding how you separate that, and if we strike this, then still in this state right now, they, a person would be allowed to, to go and hunt in these areas in Reading that comply with the setbacks from an occupied dwelling and the roadway regardless of what we have in here. So I just, I don't know whether we can get some clarification. Um, you know, that, that the, the, a person would be able to then go on that property and hunt, and this bylaw related to firearms would not apply. Is that? The, the way that the here. bylaw is written right now, <clears throat> you can discharge a firearm if you're in compliance with chapter 130, 131. Okay? okay, so you can you can shoot a gun if you are in compliance with the with chapter 131, and some of the sections in chapter 131, as um, counselor was just talking about, would allow you to walk onto private property if you're in compliance with the foot proper footage from dwellings and from roadways whether you have permission or not from the property owner, as long as it's not posted, right. no hunting. So that's what the current bylaw says. And if we, the point is if we take this out, if we amend this and take this out, then it's sort of, even though it only addresses firearms per se, we have this whole other body of law that relates to hunting in chapter 131 that we would, that still it would technically be allowed. So you, you're not going to, you're disallowing a firearm, but you're not disallowing hunting in these areas. That's correct. There, okay. and, and, and there are different types of hunting. There's bow hunting, which doesn't involve a firearm. Right, okay. So then I completely agree that it's, we're, we're not accomplishing what I think the petitioners intended. There's been enormous feedback from folks who are behind the checkers line. And we, we as a body, I think, have always looked to balance the property rights uh, for people and it not infringing on those property rights. And from, from my perspective, something that inserts, in, that what's proposed here that might insert the Board of Selectmen I think is just, it's not a well thought through process. I don't think that the Board of Selectmen have the expertise or a process. We have a lot to do this year, a real lot to do this year. I'm not quite sure that we you know, want them to be writing policies and procedures for them to be evaluating these kinds of cases. So to that point, we may need to go back and just really revisit this, but I'm reticent to do something that is, does impact property rights, even if it is only for, I'm confused, the map showed like eight places, but there was a lot more properties listed there, so I'm quite a little confused about how many property areas it, it, this impacts. So I'm, I don't want to do that, and in any case, even if we take that out, mass general law would still apply with respect to hunting. So it, it just seems like we have gone around and around and we need to not approve this, and we need to address it in some other manner going forward. Mr. Burkett. Mass general law would still apply relative to hunting, and it's, we understand that. What we're attempting to uh, address is the discharge of firearm, not hunting. There are other methods of hunting. 
and with respect to the comment that the Board of Selectmen have a lot to do, I think someone else made a comment earlier that the Board of Selectmen would have all the information they need, proper regulations, uh, all the information they need to make a, a proper decision should that decision come to them. The reason we're asking that it go to them is so that the public officials that we have elected and trust with the public safety of our community, they would be in the position to, on a case-by-case -case basis, look at a request to discharge firearms and then make a decision as to whether or not they thought it was safe. We would feel more comfortable if they made that decision, not individual uh, owners. Mr. Diderio. Uh, Ron Diderio, Precinct 6. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm supporting the, uh, uh, I'm supporting the, the um, I'm, well, I'm supporting my amendment, but I'm also supporting uh, the, the change to the, uh, to our bylaw. You, you know, I really think the problem is that uh, it's, it's not like people are against hunting or necessarily even against the firing of weapons or firearms. It's just that we happen to be living in the suburbs and the, the law, like 131, and, and, and actually, um, you know, when you, uh, you're putting, you're posting uh, no hunting and all, it, it really is sort of like when you own 10 acres of land or 40 acres of land. Most of us in town, uh, I have 10,000 square feet. I don't think I have to post no hunting on my property. So it's just that the law is, is really made, I think, in my opinion, for uh, people that are a little less suburbed than we are. Uh, and I feel for my neighbors, I don't happen to live near uh, where the shots are fired, and, and if I were, my hearing would preclude me hearing it anyway. Um, but I, I do support it. Now, in, in regards to the Attorney General, it's good to know we have a new Attorney General who knows what she's going to support. Um, so my feeling is, and uh, not to say we're anti-hunting or anti uh, the use of weapons or anything like that. It's just that we're kind of becoming citified, and it's kind of dangerous when you have a weapon. I mean, when I saw the, uh, the map of the housing in the distance, you, you can be on the edge of your property. You're pretty close to where that gun's being fired. So I'm saying, um, if you're asking for our um, attorney and our Selectmen to make a better, uh, you know, make a better change. Well, it's not going to happen because you can't do it because 131 is there. There's no way to angle through this. So I think the only thing you can do is just move in the right direction. Our bylaw is pretty strong, as is when you look at it. It says that if you're gonna fire or discharge a firearm, you need permission of the owner, you need permission of the selectmen. We're not voting on that, that's already there. We passed that. So it's this last section, and uh, you know, I I'm just gonna say, you know, go with it. If the Attorney General uh, bounces it, okay. Um, and we'll see what happens. If enough, you know, as towns become populated, Eventually, 131 is going to be modified. Thank you very much. Okay, okay right here. Thank you, Mr. Selectman. Uh, Jackie Petrillo, Precinct 6. Until you showed, could you go back to that slide with the affected um, areas? Yeah, that one. So until you put that up, I couldn't tell from what was in our handout. I think my property is actually affected by this, that I'm on the outskirt that abuts an area where um, the n private land outside the no hunting area. Um, so <laughs> I, I consider myself a fairly well-educated person, um, went to law school, did not know that I had to post no hunting 
allowed um, where my property would abut an area that's outside this no hunting area. Um, my kids play right on the border of my property, butting up against what appears to be an area in green there. Um, so I, I would, you know, I will vote to support this. And, and I, I think my, my point is that if we're concerned about impacting property owners' rights, my rights as a property owner have been impacted unbeknownst to me. So this would positively affect me in, and I think other people who may not be aware that their property actually borders this land. Um, and, I, and I don't think that uh, asking for, for the Board of Selectmen to approve requests to, to discharge a firearm in that area uh, is putting an unnecessary burden on somebody who wishes to discharge a firearm in that area. So I would encourage, um, I would encourage people to, to support uh, the amendment. Thank you. I saw a hand in the far right. Yes. Hey, uh, John Breslin, Precinct 3. I'd just like to make a motion to indefinitely postpone this article. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Further discussion? Did I miss anybody before we open it up? Oh, Ms. Binda? Angela Binda, Precinct 5. I move the question. Excuse me, did you? I, I was yeah. looking down when you said that. May I move the question? I request to Okay, I'm sorry. I just missed it as all. Well. Okay, is there a second to that? Now, moving the question, it requires two thirds vote. It ends debate. As I said earlier, I know there are people in the back that wish to speak. This would preclude them. So keep that in mind when you're voting. But it requires a two thirds vote. I need four counters. Uh, point, of point of order. Is this a call the question to indefinitely postpone? This, this calls the question on everything under this article. Okay, and then we would you. take them in order as uh, indefinitely postponed. The, uh, if that passes, it would end. Then we would go to the amendment. Then we would go to the, the final. Uh, Mr. Brown, would you take uh, my right plus uh, the Board of Selectmen? Uh, Mr. Crook, would you take the right center? Mr. Rushworth, would you take the left center? And Ms. Russell, would you take the left? And I don't know if we have anybody up here or not. Okay, all those in favor of ending debate, please rise. Ten. Thirteen. Thirteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. Twelve. Twelve. Those opposed to ending debate. Mr. Crook. 29, Mr. Crook? 18. 18? 21. 21. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. The vote being 52 in the affirmative, 92 in the negative, the motion is not uh, is not passed. Further discussion? Yes. Uh, thank you, Bruce McKenzie, Precinct 8. Um, I, by the way, I counted a approximately 150 people in the audience, and we have about 150 town meeting members, so it's, <laughs> we had quite a turnout. Um, as we move to letting non-members speak and, and residents speak, I'd like to point out that the Gun Owners Action League on their website, goal.org, publicized this meeting right up on top of their webpage and asked both residents and non-residents to attend this meeting. Thank you. Further discussion before we move on? Point of information? Yes. Of could, could you use the microphone? I'm sorry. Mary Ellen O'Neill, Precinct 4, follow up to Mr. McKenzie's comment. When we have, uh, when we invite non town meeting members to speak, are we asking that they be Reading residents? I think given the number of people, the lateness of the hour, and the length of town meeting debate, that it would be reasonable that they, we restrict that to writing residents? I don't believe the bylaw restricts that. Uh, Mr. Meares, do you have it in front of you?
apparently we can do that. I would ask that at least to start with anyway that Reading residents uh, take precedence of the uh, non-members just so we have people that are directly affected by this law. Okay. Ex excuse I me, follow up, Mr. Moderator. Oh, okay, Mr. O'Neill. Um, I request that we vote on that. I request that we, we solicit only the opinions of Reading residents. And I would ask that we vote on that if, if that's the only way. I do not want to hear from outsiders on this. I'm sorry. It's too late, it's too long, and I'm sure we have plenty from Reading that would like to speak. Excuse I would like second. to restrict it to Reading residents. As I had stated earlier, there is no prohibition, and town meeting really does not have the right to restrict that. Um, what I will do is I'm asking the town that they respect the fact that it should be people that are uh, residents directly affected by this speak first, but I'm not going to ask the town to vote on restricting people. There is no bylaw restricting them. Do you have the, excuse me, another follow-up, two things. One, I would ask you as moderator, if it's within your powers, someone else thinks that it is, to make that decision on our behalf. And second, if you don't decide to do that, that people who get up to speak, who are, that everyone has to identify themselves and their address, just as we, as elected members, have to do, and that they reveal any associations that they have. That is part of the bylaw. Uh, Again, I would ask, this is, this is a legislative body, I would ask that we not have any kind of demonstrations. But I am going to now open it to anybody that would like to, to ask a question. I will start with the person with the paper in his hand. I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but uh, uh, I, I, you, need, you need to come down and use the microphone. And I would ask that everybody state their name and uh, precinct. Address. A and your yeah, address is, will be more practical. Uh, Mark Ventura, Precinct 2, 142 Belmont Street in Reading, Mass. Um, I came here uh, when this issue came up with an open mind, and the, the more I learn, uh, the more I have to comment and hearing stuff today. I have a lot to say. I'm going to go through it quick. Um, I'm deeply involved in this community. I'm a member of the Reading Little League Board. I volunteer for Reading Rec. My wife's the head of the PTO. Through that, we've embraced families from the Timberneck neighborhood, Charles Street, and of course, my neighborhood. And we're a tight community. Um, I consider those friends, extended family. Um, I'm not anti-gun, legal, responsible gun ownership. I'm not anti-hunting. Um, however, I'd like to make a few comments uh, that some town meeting members commented on. Uh, the gentleman from Heather Drive in Precinct 3. A gun range is a lot different from open space, period. Um, secondly, uh, Phil Pacino, Precinct 5 waste of time. My children's safety and the safety of all residents is not a waste of time. Uh, secondly, regarding this issue, if you could pull up the Timberneck Swamp map, please. Um, I've heard some of those gunshots um, Christmas night, late night. So some people aren't being responsible gun owners. That's enough on that. Secondly, my neighbors told me they saw a tree stand within a few hundred feet of their house. Tree stands used for hunting, period. So again, you have some hunters, I'm not saying all hunters, but some hunters are, aren't being responsible. I grew up in that neighborhood. I have three children, 10 and two seven-year-olds, all boys. I explored that swamp when I was a child, whether my parents told me to or not. And as my children get older, they'll probably do the same thing. 
I don't want those children being shot. Another comment. This is the year 2015, not 1932 or 1940. Se uh, another um, issue. I'm not against hunting, but a football field is 300 feet long. Please look at that map. Maps are great, cross hatching is great, colors are great. That is not delineated in the woods. You have no idea when you're in those woods what area you are on. You do not know if you're within that 500 foot buffer. You don't know if you're on that private parcel of land. Is there an orange line or a fence or even some caution tape delineating that area? There is not. It's not posted. Se uh, another point um, regarding the gentleman that wanted to um, include the portion of section 3.7, um, I'll call it the varmint clause, uh, killing animals because they're damaging your property. Isn't that what animal control is for? We had a coyote that was sick, wasn't afraid of humans anymore in our neighborhood. We called animal control. They took care of business. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Yes, right in the back. I'm not done yet. I'd oh, like to oh, also- me, I'm um, sorry, I thought you were back. I, oh no, I was just saying thank you to animal control. Um, I'm not a hunter, I'm not against it. I'm not sure when these hunting seasons are. Um, at minimum, I think we should have some public notification of these times, uh, just to inform the general public, um, in general, because there are other, other areas where hunting could be conducive. But I don't think there is the right location. Um, my other question is, why did the bylaw change in 2011? Um, it did change, they added that article that allowed the hunting on private property. It wasn't there before. Um, I'd like to know why it changed. And if anyone could answer that, that would be a fantastic question. Yeah, Mr. Malacca. I can't answer that and we've been asking ourselves that question for a while. Um, we'll have to get in touch with former town council or the former town manager. But just so you know, specifically, the change that happened in 2011 is the last five words were added. And if you will, that the amendment that's proposed to the bylaw change is to remove those five words. So there must have been a reason, but none of us know what it was. Um, and lastly, I think um, we need to make sure the information on the town website is up to date and available. You click on the link to the map, you can't get it. Um, so there's a lot of information that's outdated. That's how I found the 2008 version of the bylaw. And I think that just needs to be updated to inform the public. Again, this is a huge safety concern of mine, my neighbors, and I think a lot of the residents. And uh, it shouldn't be taken lightly. Thank you for your time. Yes, the woman I called on. Maureen Hilliard, Precinct 2. For 38 years, I've lived on Timberneck Drive. We've spoken a lot about rights, the rights of the property owners, the rights of the gun owners, the rights of the hunters. I think the ultimate right is the right to keep myself and my family safe. In 38 years, I could not imagine when my son was out playing in the yard, when I have guests there in the summertime in the yard, when my dog is running around in my yard, that an accident could have happened. But it's very possible. It is not probable, maybe, but it's not impossible. This is the right that we need to be concerned about the right of our citizens, whether you live, as I do, right in that area, or if you live in the middle of downtown Reading, it doesn't matter. The right of keeping our citizens safe is the only thing that matters. To have the selectmen have to give somebody permission is just another layer. It is not going to solve all the problems.
but it is another layer. And I ask the people of this town meeting, and believe me, I've sat here as a town meeting member myself. It really is a lot simpler than we're making it. Please, please, don't let's come back and visit this after we've had a tragedy. That would be the tragedy. Thank you. Where is the discussion? Yes, in the, right in the front row, right behind the camera? Yes. How much time? Ten minutes. He's, he's, at, he's restricted to five minutes right now. He's asking for ten minutes. Is there objection? Oh, okay. Yes, I am. Yes, yes. Okay, we will take a vote. Um, all those in favor of giving him an extra five minutes, please raise your hand. Oh, hold on. Point of order. My name is Tony Chor. I live at 21 Juniper Circle in Precinct 1. Okay. Again, I'll ask those in favor of giving him an extra five minutes, which would be a total of ten minutes, please raise your hand. And those opposed? And the motion carries. Mr. Tora. Thank you. As I said, my name is Tony Tora. <clears throat> I grew up in Reading. I raised my family here. I have an agenda. Okay, I hunt, I fish. I've hunted and shot for 45 years. I was 10 years past pres vice president of Reading Rifle. Uh, I do volunteer work for the Mass Fish and Wildlife, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, Maine. I'm a hunter education instructor. I'm a master instructor. I've been so for 19 years. I'm also the, uh, in the basic education course. I also am a master instructor in the waterfowl identification course. I take great pride in graduating safe, responsible hunters, men, women, and children. Okay. For, this, for the sake of keeping things moving. I have a PowerPoint. I'm not going to bother with it. Um, it's, it's just going to confuse the issue. I, I'll just talk to you guys. All right? I know most of you came here with your minds already made up. Uh, maybe not as many as I thought. I'm very encouraged to see that. Um, and please, you know, I don't want the petitioners to take this personally. Um, I understand it's not personal. Uh, we don't know each other, so this has nothing to do with them but I'm gonna say what I have to say. It, it's funny that we take an activity that has, is, is statistically safer than golf and we demonize it out of fear and ignorance. You know, I hear people use the code words, uh, I actually wrote them down because there's so many. The children, everybody trots that one out, right? My children hunt. I wouldn't take them hunting if it was unsafe. Right? They were in more danger on that lacrosse field for nine years that I coached than they ever were hunting. People laugh at that. They don't want to hear it. Go to the CDC. Go, go anywhere. Look up any statistic you want. I'm not making it up. And I'm not going to bore you with it. But those are the facts. All right? This is a Trojan horse to attack gun owners' rights, hunters' rights, and property rights. The antis are never anti-anything. They're not against hunting. We're not against guns. But the rhetoric is always against hunting. We're taking an issue that has no basis in fact. There's been no injuries in Reading. Yes, there are hunting accidents. And, and some of them are tragic accidents. Right? I have a DVD I run in my class where a young man was shot by his best friend and killed in Maine. Right? It brings the class to tears, but that's the message we get across. It, it's serious. It's not the drunken yahoo walking around the woods firing at your house. The 500-foot rule works because it's a safety rule. Of course the bullet goes further than that. We're trained to not shoot at houses. We're trained, and it's our responsibility to know where we can hunt in what town, and to be 500 feet at a minimum. 
Maine's 300. Right? New Hampshire doesn't require Hunter Orange. So a lot of states do things differently. But from a Massachusetts perspective, that's what we teach. And yes, there were accidents. We had a couple, a couple of weeks ago. I'm not denying that. I'm not hiding it. But the hypocrisy, it, it just astounds me when, when, when the agenda, it, you know, when you're not anti-gun, you're not anti-hunting, but all you want to talk about is the safety aspects of it, when it's proven time and again how safe it is compared to other activities. All right. Bee stings, right? We had 344,000 children stung under the age of 14 in, in, in 2013, and they kill an average of 53 people a year. I mean, just pick something. So don't, I don't want people to hide behind these, that the, the hunting's unsafe. Bring out your agenda and tell us what it is. Have the courage to, to, to state that you're against hunting and you want it stopped if that's your agenda. And again, the antis are never anti-anything. They never admit to an agenda, but they are anti-something, they're anti-courage. They're not anti-hunting, they just want to stop it. Mr. All the anecdotes Tora, before us you're, here. You're now delving into personalities. You're, you're guessing what people's okay. emotions I, are, right. intentions are. The general drift seems to be that we've got some illegal issues going on on public land here in town. Right? There was an email that went around the Google groups, uh, for the people on the petitioner side, we'll call it, and they mentioned an incident on Haverhill Street where a, a gentleman and his child were chased out of the woods by a couple of hunters near the uh, electric box over on uh, Haverhill Street where the you know where I mean, where it narrows down. <clears throat> I believe that. I've, I've st I stopped there one time and it costed two hunters who were going in the woods during the part of the season when you're supposed to wear orange, they were bow hunting. So I believe that. There, is, there are illegal activities going on. But it's already illegal. I I'm not happy when I see it. We've got people signing a petition and, and they're stating that we need, we need selectmen's permission to shoot a firecracker in town. I'll remind you of Mass General Law 148, Section 39. It is illegal for a private citizen to use, possess, or sell fireworks in the state of Massachusetts. Why do we need selectmen's permission? It's illegal. The petition has stated that they have an issue in their neighborhood. There's a family that likes to shoot fireworks year round. I don't see a petition to stop that. I don't see any calls to the police that I could discover. But that can't be mistaken for firearms. They, they know it's gunshots. Again, logic says the police should have been called and there should have been petitioned to stop these fireworks but it doesn't fit the agenda. Right. 10 years ago, right, there was another comment made that <clears throat> 10 years ago, Timberneck Swamp was deemed unsafe for bow hunting. That's absolutely false. Right. 10 years ago, I stood here, it was in a different auditorium, it's gone now, but I stood here and refuted the safety issues of bow hunting then. Working with conservation, we determined that while legal in some areas of that, not, in, not just on the public land, but we could make the 500 foot rule to a point in there, but as an accommodation and to avoid antagonizing the neighborhood, we decided, well conservation did, but I, I sat there with them, and we decided to close Timberneck Swamp to bow hunting, except for the private piece, which we don't have jurisdiction over. It was never a safety issue. And if somebody's telling you that, they're misinformed at best. You have about one minute left. Thank you. I'm 
We've got some dear friends that own property in town here. If I had any thought that I could hunt with a firearm in town, I would have asked them. It's been enforced as a law for years. As far as I can remember, there was no discharge. I believe 131, section 37, only, it, it is an old law. I think it, it is based on agriculture, but it is what it is. That guy can't give me permission to hunt on his property unless as, I'm his employee, immediate family member, or a lessee. And, it, and I have to file a written report with the state of anything I kill and turn it over to the state. He can't let me go hunting. Right? These people are all here because we're very concerned the slippery slope we're on when we just take these capricious changes to laws and, and don't account for the unintended consequences. Right? Thank you. Further discussion? Uh, I see one. Oh, uh, we'll get that to you. Yes, you, your turn. Good evening, town meeting members. My name is Bryn Burkhardt. I'm Eric's wife. I want to, first of all, thank you for continuing this discussion and not postponing it so something doesn't ever happen. This bylaw is about firearms. The discharge of firearms within this town is currently legal, as the police chief, as the town council have said is currently legal on private land with the landowner's permission as long as the 500 feet rule, the 150 feet rule. It was a week ago today that I found out, unbeknownst to me, after living in my home for three years, that just hundreds of feet from my house, where my children play, where my neighbor's children play, is a private parcel of land where it is legal to discharge a firearm without town selectman approval, with nobody knowing it. This is why Eric and I are here tonight. We, knew, we did not know this. We've spent the last week researching gun laws and the mass general law. I'm not a hunter, you're right. Um, but we're not here to discuss hunting. We're here to discuss removing a line in the current bylaw that will make the line clear, and as town council has said, would likely be approved so that I know when my children go out in the backyard, I don't have to be, and accidents happen, I get it, but for my peace of mind, I know that if I hear what appears to be a gunshot, that I can at least contact the town and ask if there was approval. You may think it's crazy, whatever. I, I, I'm the previous person who spoke referenced that all these people are here to support it. I don't believe that. I see a contingency of people who are on our side. He talked about courage. Please, town meeting members, have the courage to make a change, to a vote to amend this bylaw so that it is back to the original wording before it was amended in 2011, which is only three years ago, four years ago now. I don't want to make this about your right to hunt versus my right to feel that I have a peace of mind in the community I live in. But if you throw up that map again, I hope that will hit home for you, and I appreciate your saying that you've discovered there's another parcel of land. This is a public safety issue. It's not, that's not the map, I, the one that shows our, um, the Timberneck Swamp area. So I'm appealing to you. I know you don't change a law for one person. I have a community of people that I live with. There are other parcels of private land around Reading where this will affect. Please have the courage to vote to amend this bylaw. Thank you. There's a hand right. I'm not sure if you can tell who I'm pointing at. Yes, you've got it right. Good evening. Uh, my name is Edward Alsat, Edward F. Sartell. Ward 4. I currently live at 22 Oak Ridge Road with my wife, Simone, and my two children. I've been part of this community for the last 43 years. I am a seasoned hunter. I am also a person who enjoys the shooting sports. I currently have licenses to carry firearms in three New England states. I am an active member of the Reading Rifle and Revolver, Minuteman Sportsman's Club in Burlington, Addyville East Farm in Burlville, Rhode Island, and occasional guest at the Danvers Fishing Game Club, 
town of the Westford Sportsman's Club, and the Falmouth Rod and Gun Club. I also hold safety training certificates for firearms use, hunter safety certificates, Knowles Wilderness First Aid Certification, and land navigational training utilizing topographical maps, compass, and GPS. <clears throat> Excuse me. For those who do not know me, I am not your typical occasional one week a year hunt, uh, deer hunter. For the last 34 years, I've accrued thousands of hours scouting and hunting game. In a typical year, I hold licenses in Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Pennsylvania. I've been fortunate to also hunt multiple times in New York, Louisiana, Nevada, Alberta, and Quebec, Canada. Generally, hunting starts for me early October and ends in April. I've been very successful and have many memorable experiences in the pursuit of game. Yearly, I hunt deer, coyote, fox, rabbit, bobcat, grouse, pheasant, turkey, geese, and other migratory birds. I've also hunted moose, bear, boar, wolf, and mountain lion. Some of the above hunting has been done on public lands. Most has been done on private lands with landowner or lessee written or verbal permission. I'd like to thank everyone for allowing me to give my opinion on amending, uh, uh, amending Reading Bylaw 8.9.1 in regards to the removal of the line, nor the rights and privileges of an owner or lessee of land set forth in MGL Chapter 131 relative to hunting and sporting. I oppose the change in the current bylaw because this change proves to be a stance for anti-hunting by removing the landowner's rights and privileges relative to MGL Chapter 131. The existing bylaw is now being challenged with partial information, half-truths, and a motion touting major public safety. I'd like to summarize comments put forth by the town, put forth to the town selectmen by the petitioners and provide my opinions based on my experiences. Why the change? It's a major public safety concern and liability issue for such a densely populated residential community such as Reading. Bullets can travel from one mile, 5,280 feet to more than three miles, 15,843 feet, depending on the caliber of the firearm. Three miles would be from one side of the town to the other. In regards to that bullets travel one to three miles for the distance of one end of the town to the other, this would be true if, if one would intentionally, with wanton recklessness and total disregard for public safety, fire these firearms in the air at an angle between 30 and 35 degrees above the horizontal plane. I'm not a ballistics expert, but as a seasoned hunter of 34 plus years, and a shooting sportsman, I know that bullets is one as a projectile. Do not race one to three miles and just stop. Bullets and arrows travel in an arcing trajectory fashion until they, one, meet the target which they're aimed at, two, strike another object such as vegetation, or three, fall to the earth. Trajectory is influenced by bullet and arrow weight, wind, temperature, and gravity. Hunting with a bow and arrow or firearm such as a rifle or shotgun, the shot would be released at a horizontal plane with the hunter standing on the ground or at a downward plane aiming towards the ground when the hunter is elevated in a tree. All the above factors come into play causing the arrow bolt to stop. When a rifle or arrows are used for taking fur bearing game, the target is area is generally 36 inches or less above the ground. Taking into the account of Taking the trajectory into account, using safe hunting practices and the dense type of vegetation natural to New England. It's not tell you about one minute. Oh, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> I'm gonna need at least three to four minutes. I apologize. Are you asking for three, three more minutes? I am. Is there objection? Yes, okay. All those in favor of allowing three more minutes, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. You have about 50 seconds. 50 seconds. Okay. Let me get to the... Just bear with me for one second, please. Uh, some of the questions were forward. Um, where could this take place in Reading? 
There are several areas in Reading, most are private properties. One parcel of unbuildable land within Timberneck Swamp. I was asked by Mr. Marshall if I had the opportunity to get permission and hunt in Timberneck Swamp, would I? I replied, yes, absolutely. This area, along with other areas in Reading, would meet the 500 feet from in-use building or structure. Would be ideal for hunt bow hunters and for small caliber firearms in the taking of a small game. Example, coyote. I'm forced to skip around here, guys. Give me one second. Okay, it has been said to me that Reading is a densely populated bedroom community. There isn't a need for a place, there isn't a need or place for hunting. It's too unsafe. My response to that question is this. The first part of it is this. As I said before, in Massachusetts, I have, I have landowner and lessee permission for hunting in Newberry, Newburyport, Middleton, and Holden, Mass. I also have permission from the Massachusetts Department of can, Conservation. Can you wrap it up? You're, you're really out of time. Just, okay. Yeah. Uh, what I meant, what I'm trying to say is, basically, I've also hunted in Wakefield. These are obviously bedroom communities. There is a place for this. And in summary, which I'll get right to the point. I'm afraid you're out of time. Uh, Thank you. Further discussion? Um, uh, 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 but I just want to make one more comment. I'm sorry, you, you've, you've actually gone about seven minutes. Ms. Thank Eaton? You. Ms. Eaton? Nancy Eaton, I live at 13 Short Street, and I'm never sure whether I'm in Precinct 1 or Precinct 8 because I've been changed four times. Um, anyways, my background, I used to be a town meeting member from Precinct 8. I formerly was the chair of the Conservation Commission for seven years, and I chaired two different versions of the Open Space Committee. I'm also past president of the Rifle, Red, Red, Reading Rifle and Revolver Club. So I've been on both sides of issues. Um, growing up, my father was a game warden when each town in the Commonwealth had their own game warden. I am not a hunter personally, but I do uphold people's right to hunt. Both when I went on calls with my father and when I served on the Conservation Commission, I've seen a lot of destruction by wild animals. Uh, the biggest problem we've had in Reading has been with beaver, flooding, causing damages to homes. And there are procedures for dealing with all of those things. But I've also seen destruction of property by wild animals that didn't come within that version. Someone asked before about the Reading Police Department approving people shooting in Reading. Well, the, the issue is in Massachusetts, there is requirement under Chapter 140 that everyone have a, either a firearms identification or a license to carry. Those are controlled by the police and by the State Department of Public Safety. So that in order to get one of those things, you have to be fingerprinted, go through a background check and qualifications. To be admitted to a, mem a member of the Reading Rifle and Revolver Club, you have to have a, either one or the other, a license to carry or a firearms identification card. All of these, to get into the club, you also have to take a basic firearm safety course. So that we are very concerned about safety uh, for firearms and for everyone using them. But we also promote firearms use and training for youth and adults, and that's what we're looking for uh, is the appropriate use of firearms. I'm not speaking for the club. I'm no longer in a uh, leadership position at the club, but I am speaking as an individual who has lived in this town for 40 years. And I am concerned with the continual erosion of personal rights and privileges I'm very concerned about safety, I'm concerned about children, but I'm also concerned about the erosion of, of personal rights. And I realize that the Board of Selectmen 
uh, issue permits for lots of things, but I don't think the Board of Selectmen has the basic background and knowledge to be able to decide issues regarding firearm safety issues uh, and hunting and discharge of weapons in town. I think if anybody, um, the person that would be most knowledgeable would be the police department. And while I don't like giving my work away to anybody, um, I think that the selectmen really don't have the, the capacity to be able to uh, understand the complexities of all of those issues. So I would urge you to vote no uh, on this article. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Arena? I'd like to call the question. Is there a second? Second. Now, the one thing that could uh, come before that, Mr. Pacino had asked to um, uh, make a motion to table. Withdraw that. Okay. We have a motion to, um, to end debate. Again, I would ask my counters, do I have all four here? I do. This, uh, this requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of ending debate, please rise. Thirty-three? Twenty-six. Twenty-six? Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine? Twenty-nine. Those opposed? Five. Five? Five. Five? Four. The vote being 117 in the affirmative, 19 in the negative, the motion carries and debate is ended. We will now move first to the proposed amendment. Following that, we will then move to the indefinite postponement and then finally the main question. Uh, the amendment was, I have forgotten. <laughs> oh, uh, we, do we have it up on the screen? Yes, okay, all those in favor of the proposed amendment to this uh, motion, please raise your, your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. Next, we have a motion to indefinitely postpone. All those in favor, if indefinite postponement, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. And now we come to the main motion. All those in favor of the main motion, please no raise no. point of order. Majority only. It's only it's a straight it's a straight bylaw, not a it's only bylaw. Do we have another point of order? I'd like to request a roll call vote. A roll call vote, that requires 20 people. Do we have 20 people asking for a roll call vote? Please stand if, you, uh, if you're asking. A roll call vote, the town clerk would, um, well actually I would read the names, the town clerk would record them. And we would ask you yes or no. So we have one, two, three, we do not have sufficient. So we will proceed to a vote on the main motion. All those in favor of the main motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed, and the motion does not carry. Business under Article 6, motion oh, Mr. Adjourn, Arena. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn until tomorrow night. Is there a second? Second, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, motion carries. This town meeting stands adjourned until tomorrow night.